Welcome to Midwest Paranormal Presents Paranormal Soup. I'm your host, Jason Bland, and tonight we have guest Mary Medeiros. She is upcoming author of a book, In the Akashic Realm, Conversations with the Divine. We're going to be talking about the Akashic Records. I'm probably saying it wrong, Akashic, Akashic. I, I, I know I'm the butcher of names. I probably butchered her last name. I forgot to ask how it sounds. She'll be joining us tonight, uh, even for the World Wide Web of Weird. She'll be in the panel here. She's already with us. Um, now, she's not doing readings tonight. She does do readings for the Akashic Records and is able to look into it and see information about your past lives and other information, but she's not doing a reading on it tonight because that's like an hour, hour and a half reading. And I, I, I should get one too. I really, I need to get a reading from her. Uh, I had one reading for Kasha Films. I was like in my 20s. I can't remember. <laughs> it might have been important, uh, but I've been so fascinated by it. Uh, ever since I was a, a kid, I had dreams about a great library before I knew what the Akashic Realms were. I used to imagine like this great library when you die. And, like, there's all these books you could jump into and go on adventures. I know I was a weird kid, but later on I'd find out about the Akashic Realm. I go, wow, was I like intuited that? And I've always been interested in it ever since. Of course, I'm interested in everything weird and unusual. That's why this is Paranormal Soup. And we got a lot of weird to get to in the World Wide Web of weird. Boy, oh my God. So many articles I had to cut. I, I had to decide. I hope I picked the best ones tonight. I think I picked the, the weirdest ones at least, maybe. But that's up to opinion uh, but we got a lot of weird to get to and we will take your phone calls later in the show just remember we're not she's not doing readings tonight but you definitely I know I have people that are intuitive psychic you know want to access the Kashuk realm this would be a great guest tonight to ask what's the best ways to do that we will open up those final phone lines later in, in the show for you to do it if you've had your Kashuk reading from someone before and you know want to share it tonight call in too later on love to hear about it but you know we got a lot to get to so let's go ahead and get rolling into the show Welcome to another night of Paranormal Soup. As I said before, I'm your host, Jason Bland. Tonight's guest is Mary Medeiros. Am I saying that right, Mary Medeiros? I'm probably butchering it. I usually do. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> yes, no, you got it right, Mary Medeiros. Wow. And it's um, that... Akashic Records, so you actually got Akashic? it. Akashic? Okay, yes. uh, Akashic, mm -hmm. Akashic, I'll, I'll butcher it at some point. This is how I usually roll. <laughs> so, like I said, World Wide Web Weird, feel free to interrupt me anytime. I love other people's perspectives on these news stories, and we're going to get to those here in just a second. I want to make sure the man who runs my videos and articles is Rob Autry himself. Let's make sure we can hear you. Are you there, Rob? No, I don't hear you because you're muted. <laughs> okay. Now I'm I hear you. <laughs> I'm here. And let me get that. There's a share screen. Yes, yes, yes. Also, my beautiful co-host, Jamie D, is with us as well, as she is every Sunday night. How are you doing tonight, Jamie? Doing great. Thank you. I know you've been excited for this show. I'm excited, Mary. We're excited to have you on. It's a true honor. But we do this every Sunday night. It's called World Wide Web of Weird. We cover the latest in paranormal news, evidence, videos, shenanigans. A lot of times shenanigans. It, it, a lot of times weird. This is where the weird happens live too, you know, on this show. But the World Wide Web of Weird is what we cover throughout the week. What's weird? If you're new to the show, that, this is what we do the first half. Mary interview will start after the World Wide Web of Weird after our commercial uh, broadcast there. Um, and then we'll take phone lines probably second half of the show. So just hang in there. But we got a lot to get to. So let's go ahead and roll into the World Wide Web of Weird. <laughs> Tonight on the World Wide Web of Weird, I thought we'd start off with a story we, we covered a year ago. It was really, really heartbreaking. And I hate to start out on a heartbreaking story, but I, I figured this is where we start. I always like to start off with stories that we've covered before, with new updates. Well, this one is, uh, I saw this on Coast to Coast and a number of sites. Church grapples with wave of Russian do-it-yourself exorcisms. If you remember about a year ago, uh, a, a boy, a young boy was killed during one of these do-it-yourself exorcisms. I guess this is a, a, a uh, epidemic in Russia. Is do it your DIY exorcisms. 
For those listening on the Paranormal Radio Network, we are a webcast. You can also watch us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. We, we are live there. We show videos and show photos and pictures, but I'll try to narrate as best as possible. Um, here's the picture. Whoop, let me add that to stream. There we go. This was, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers this from about a year ago. This boy had died. Uh, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union at the end of 1980s, Russia has reportedly seen an uptick in the number of exorcisms there, and many of them have not been performed by religious officials. The Russian Orthodox Church has issued a statement directing people to leave the practice of de uh, driving out evil spirits to the qualified members of the clergy. In response to recent DIY exorcisms that have uh, resulted in the deaths of adults and children alike, the Church has also published a new regulations laying out proper guidance for how and when exorcisms should be performed, as well well as by whom, according to Bishop uh, Hellerian, if I'm saying that right, a senior official familiar with the document. In one high-profile 2019 case, is the one we covered, a man allegedly whipped and gagged his nine-year-old son in an attempt to exercise what he believed was a demon possessing the boy who died during the ordeal. The man and at least one other person then allegedly tied, uh, tried to hide the boy's body after he failed to respond to attempts to resurrect him from the dead. They, like, sat there, waited for his body to rise. Yeah. In another incident that same year, a woman allegedly suffocated her adult son to death in an attempt to address his interest in the occult topics. List of similar accusations goes on with an alarming number of children among the victims of overzealous amateur exorcists. It's believed that these crimes are often committed at the urging of the leaders of offshoot sects of the church who reportedly believe that such extreme measures are necessary to fight the forces of evil. Yeah, um, you're killing kids? No. You know, I, it scares me. We talked, we had Terry Lovelace on last week and he talked about his childhood friend, you know, who he believed was being abducted too. Um, and, uh, or what, you know, and, you know, his family was religious. They said it was demons. You know, how many of these kids that are having this are going through something? It's not de demons, though. You know, it's sad. It's real you know, sad. The difference in doing an exorcism and putting a pillow over their head. <laughs> Yeah. So we've covered so many of these cases it's not just russia you know i mean there's a lot of this going on in south america too um it, it, and it seems to be more on the rise I, I don't know why that's the question speaking of that you know you know the exorcist creeps me out was when the the i think it's for, i don't know if it was in the original film or not which is when uh she like does the backward stand and crawls down the stairs i don't know why that just creeped me out the yeah. most well now there's this viral video rotch crab humanoid caught on film uh, yeah, there's the video. A bizarre piece of footage circulating online purportedly shows a human entity scurrying around uh, uh, down a road in a crab-like fashion. The very weird video was reportedly captured by a home security system in Costa Rica and was shared on Reddit, of course Reddit, right, uh, by a resident of the country earlier this month. Alas, beyond that bit of background information, little is known concerning the circumstances by which the scene unfolded. Be that as it may, the footage is rather compelling by the way of its sheer strangeness. In the video, a dog lurking on a dimly lit road is being taken at... Uh, be being uh, taken aback by something approaching uh, from off the screen. When the oddity comes into view, it appears to be a human-sized creature walking on all fours in a manner akin to a crab. Go ahead and roll the footage. You hear my skepticism in my voice already, right? Okay, good. Uh, exit full screen. It won't let you do it. Let's go ahead and play it like this. It, it, it's blurry, it's crappy. I don't think blowing it up is going to make it look any better. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Video shows creature weird bent legs running around on all fours while dogs bark at him. For people listening on the radio network, yeah, you can see this creature kind of like walking around, creature or person, <clears throat> and a dog like barking him. There was no audio, just like creepy music. I don't want to play. Um, I, to me, I mean, it seems like the dog is like a little agitated. Don't play the audio. You, we don't want to hear their creepy music. You know, people who walk like that. Oh yeah, I, I have friends do it all the time. <laughs> it creeps me out. Or like the videos and things. See, really, the way the dog—I mean, I've owned dogs. I love dogs, and the well, way the that dog is going like, around him is like, doing? If it's a, you know, yeah, like, it's like the dog isn't doesn't seem that aggravated by it. But you can't hear the dog. If I if I could hear the dog, I'd know better. But it seems like the body language of the dog, way how close he gets to it, he's not that scared. Like he's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what are you, What are you doing? But I see people do all sorts, and some people are gonna getting drunk and really walking like a crab, good. buddy. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So this has been viral, you know, these no provenance to this, you know, who knows, you know, it's interesting. But I mean, and I don't I don't know if there's crab people. It could be could be. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm open to any idea. Crazy. Crab people. All right. Let's move on. <clears throat> we got a lot to get to here. All right. This this is creepy. Uh, 
I watched, you know, I'm an Alfred Hitchcock fan, and <laughs> with little kids, I remember the first time I ever saw the birds. Yeah, I don't, I don't ever, it's like snakes, Rob. I don't get why people have birds as pets. I do I understand they're loving creatures and people love them. And I love, you know, I've had my experience with birds out in nature, but in my house, no. Uh, <laughs> hundreds yeah, of birds, birds be <laughs> yeah, 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 no birds and snakes, man. Hundreds of birds become trapped in fireplace off a of California home. Firefighters in California, California found themselves with a rather unusual problem on their hands when hundreds of birds somehow wound up stuck in the fireplace of a home. The odd incident reportedly occurred on Sunday evening, that would be last week, uh, um, uh, Montecito, when a resident discovered that approximately 1,000 of the diminutive creatures, later identified as m uh, migratory species known as swifts, had flown down their chimney and could not escape. An eerie video captured the scene and shows the birds fluttering up against the fireplace. Go ahead and play. Imagine finding this. Go ahead and play the sound of this one if you can, because it's creepy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'd be breaking up that fireplace after that was done. <laughs> Tell them to light a fire. <laughs> no. No. That's bad. You're going to have a bad time. Don't do that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if that isn't a, like a bad omen, I don't know what is. All right, let's move on. We got a lot to get to. All right. I talked about shenanigans. I, I don't know if this is shenanigans, this next one. I'm always interested in ghost stuff from other parts of the world, um, especially like, you know, in, in Arab countries, you, you, you know, you, they got to be experiencing the same thing. And this guy is a regular YouTuber who posts creepy videos of places he goes abandoned. Uh, but this newest video by him apparently shows a ghost boy. Uh, you know, I've complained about all the the videos that come out of like, you know, Southeast Asia. There's a lot of fake, like bad CGI shadow person thing and then clickbait stuff. I don't know if this is what this guy is. I don't know if that's what he's doing. I have my doubts on this. Maybe I'm wrong. Urban Explorer films Ghost Boy in Jordan. The creepy footage, which shows an abandoned uh, litter strewn hallway, and this is from Unexplained Mysteries, of an under unidentified building illuminated only by the light of Hassan's torch. This is the, the filmer. Is unnerving enough as it is, but near the end of the video, he turns to see a mysterious figure standing at the end of the nearby hallway. At first, it seems as though the figure, which looks like a boy dressed in black, might not even be real, owing to the way it stands motionless. However, after a few seconds, it can be seen turning towards the right and walking out of sight behind the wall. Seemingly keen to investigate, Hassan then hurries up the corridor towards the corner. The figure disappeared behind, only to find that there is nothing there but a small empty room. That's what you're going to see. It's pretty much by describes for those people listening. I still have my doubts. I don't know. The only thing I say about this before we watch, just watch how flat he seems. It's You know he's not flat when he moves, but when it's still, when he's holding there, it seems so flat. And when I had, I've had people describe full body apparitions they've seen that are totally physical, same, but it seemed kind of like the image was flat. So that's the only thing I thought was creepy, but I, I think it's shenanigans. Go ahead and play. It has audio. You can't understand what he's saying, but somebody might in the audience. I don't know. And if you go to the video on YouTube, uh, I don't know. What's the name of the YouTube channel? I don't think you can. You can find it at Unexplained Mysteries if you go to find this article. Uh, people on my Patreon site, I am sharing the articles now up on my Patreon, so you can go there and click on them. A little something I throw to you for helping donate to the show, right? Uh, but you see how he just walked and moved to the corner? Now here's my zoom in of it. He's very flat there, but you know, I think he's wearing a mask. That's what it did it for me. It's like South Park. <laughs> the characters in South Park are all flat and move. Right. Well, I've heard people describe that they see spirits sometimes like are like, you know, totally fully solid, not transparent, but they were mm -hmm. flat. I've heard that described before. I've I've seen ghosts. I've had my everybody knows I've had my experience. I've had had that experience. But I've heard that. And that's what it kind of seemed like at first, but when I do the when you do the zoom in on this, uh, when I have it zoom in, I think he's wearing a mask. And that kind of says maybe it's, you know, I don't know. It could be, I mean, it's another country. It might be a normal thing for him. I don't know. And there's a way you can fake anything. I mean, yeah, he runs up and the guy's not in the room, but it's bad lighting. He could have snuck out right as he walked up through there around him. They could have planned this all out. I mean, it's, I don't know. I hate being the skeptical jerk. I mean, maybe this is real, but I think he's wearing like a, a mask there. I mean, maybe that maybe the ghost is wearing a mask. I don't know. Hard to say. And without the other thing is, is like, we don't know the location. You won't tell us where he's at. Of course, who knows in Jordan, like how faux pas this is too, to do these kind of videos. I don't know. That's true. 
so we might not be able to say where he went. It's it's got the creepy element, and there's so many of these videos like this. It's like I wish people, I w wish there were. It was all everybody was honest. We could just believe it. He showed it. Yeah, you had that experience, but I don't know, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> if it was his only video and that's all he did, he's like, I had this experience. Well, then I had more credibility. But he has a bunch. If you go to the YouTube oh, channel, no. you'll see. Not like this. They're not all like this. They're not really any like this. But he does go to abandoned places and has like see creepy footage stuff. And, like, so I don't know. It is what it is. All right, let's move on. Speaking of more shenanigans, and this might not be, I, again, over, overly critical. Uh, very strange scene unfolded. I, I'm an open person. To, I hadn't, I, the least scene I've ever experienced a Sasquatch, but I'm open to the possibility. I really am. A uh, very strange scene unfolded at a Sasquatch, contra, con, ugh, Sasquatch conference, say that five times fast, over the weekend when while on stage, a researcher purportedly spoke to the legendary cryptid on the phone and shared the conversation with the people in the attendance. The bizarre moment reportedly occurred this past Saturday at the Nebraska Bigfoot Conference in the city of Hastings, as a keynote speaker, Igor Burstev detailed his work investigating the creature in the native Russia. During the presentation, he surprised, surprised the audience by calling a Russian colleague who was allegedly in the presence of a Bigfoot uh, for an impromptu interview with the famed cryptid. Uh, during the hard-to-fathom conversation, Burstev translated the Sasquatch unique language, which might be described as a series of gruntable squawks. You'll hear it in a second. Uh, specifically that it loathes poachers and people who uh, befoul its forest habitat. That's basically what it says in all these screeches. Go ahead and play that footage. A FaceTime or a phone call? FaceTime would have been great. Of course, couldn't see it from there, but it wasn't, I don't think it was FaceTime. It was just audio. But that's what you should be doing. <laughs> we need FaceTime with Bigfoot. All right, go ahead. You need audio for this, though. You might have to roll it back there. Roll the video back. And Where's the audio? That's the important part. No, don't hear it, Rob. I don't know what you did. Let me see if I can get it to work. I can at least play the audio. I think I have it. Oh, there it is. Let's try that again. Yeah, try it again. I hear it now. Okay, you can stop there. They talk, but they're speaking Russian. <clears throat> um, you think that was Bigfoot calling in to a conference? I mean, I'm, maybe. I'm gonna maybe. I'm gonna go ahead and go with a no. It may be <laughs> though. I mean, I, who's to say? If they're an intelligent creature, maybe they understand. You know, he's like, "Here, talking to this thing." You know. Yeah. But do FaceTime. Do FaceTime. Put it on a big screen. We want to see Bigfoot. That's that's what everybody's missing, buddy. We it's we need like the two together. Me. We need the video and we need the audio together, and we need it not to be blurry. And we need some physical evidence. Get some hair samples. I believe Bigfoot exists. I really do, and I've never seen him. I've never seen him. So I mean, I but I I believe in the possibility. I've had guests on. We got a couple good guests on Bigfoot coming up, but. <sighs> I, I, I hope for their sake this was real. If it's not, shame on them. Don't do this stuff. Please don't. I mean, where are the pictures that go along with it? If there's not video, there, somebody at least had to take a picture. Come on, you're you in got a phone. Play, could take a picture. <laughs> record, record it, please, please. Well, Bigfoot's calling in uh, Bigfoot uh, conferences. Uh, not FaceTime. That'd be great if you FaceTime. We got Chupacabra taking a trip on a UFO. And actually, this is really interesting. Um, UFO lands in Bolivian Village and releases Chupacabra-like creature. As the Tribune here, I also have the uh, Coast to Coast article, which I think is shorter. I might use that one because we're running out of time. Residents of a village in Bolivia claim to have witnessed a UFO landing when the craft sus subsequently released a trooper-like, chupacabra-like creature into their community. The very strange incident reportedly occurred in the town of Mont Montenegro. I probably butchered that. Yes, definitely. Earlier this month, when the observers first spotted, spotted a puzzling halo of light appearing in the sky and descended uh, to the ground, there was a crash. And like thunder, recalled a Bolivian UFO research, researcher, Javier Alega, who indicated that he objected, uh, uh, the object appeared to be throwing fire. Things took an even weirder turn when those on the scene saw some kind of entity exit the craft. According to witnesses, this interstellar interloper stood approximately one foot tall and sprouted three fingers on each of its hands. The mysterious visitor is also said to have possessed very large eyes, yet was, an un unable, to, uh, yet was unable to see, although how exactly that was determined is uncertain. 
yeah, I don't know. Upon uh, exiting the craft, concerned residents claimed the oddity proceeded to wander the streets, frightening children who were watching this all unfold. The creature, which many likened to the legendary Chupacabra, eventually vanished in the night, and the craft that appeared to deliver it to Earth also disappeared. All that was left behind for this case were some curious impressions in the ground and several shaken residents. To that end, uh, Aleg, Alega, I say his last name, understandably called for a scientific investigation of the matter, though whether such an undertaking occurs seems doubtful. Uh, there's a whole, like, you go to Costos or uh, go to the Tribune, they got a news article from Bolivia News. I mean, they went and interviewed these people. There's people there, I don't know, I can't understand what their language is speaking, but they seem serious, like, They've all seen something. Something happened. I'd love to get the translation of that newscast because um, these people do all appear to be seeing something. There's drawings that they got from the people. So something happened here. It reminds me very much of stuff that happened in Argentina uh, and in Brazil. You know, they had similar like creatures and UFO connections. So what's that about? Mm. You know, I've always said, you know, do Bigfoot, Chupacabra, could they be the pets of aliens? Like, <laughs> go let them out. Let them, let, let them go get a run out. Let them go use the bathroom. You know, I know Who it's probably not that. Chupacabra <laughs> Chupacabra's got to take a leak. Pull the UFO over. <laughs> All right. No, seriously, though, I do believe these people saw something. This is really interesting. All right. All right. Next up, let's see, because we're going to run out of time. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Last week, we covered uh, somebody coming out with a new a new Rendlesham Forest UFO video. Uh, that happened during the time, 1980, when Rundlesham Forest incident happened. We've had Nick Rifford on who said it's all a psyop by the military. I don't know. Uh, but now more photos are coming out, more stuff. It's like now, remember I was saying with, about Terry Lovelace last week when we had him on that the disclosure movement isn't the government. Yeah. It's us. It's, it's us. us. It's us not being afraid to talk anymore and say, I've had it. I'm telling what I've seen. Or I got this photo. And these yeah. people held on to this stuff. So this is a retired police officer has come forward to reveal his close encounters uh, near Woodbridge in December 1980. I'm not going to read the whole article because I don't know if I can even read parts of it. It's very long. He tells a whole number of stories of his, everything that was going on at that time when he was a police officer and uh, how he got this photo. But this is supposed to be uh, um, from uh, under it. He snapped this photo. Now, people are like, of course, skeptical and all that. It's actually been analyzed. You know, UFO researchers actually taking this very seriously, and there was an update on in this article I want to read. Uh, update from the author. Just thought I would mention that I got a reply back, a well-known UFO researcher, and he told me that he had a Polaroid photograph looked at by an expert using the same software and technology the FBI and CIA photo forensic experts use for analysis. He told me it came back as clean as a whistle, completely untouched, not even one pixel if it was manipulated image. The soft software would have detected it. He said it is one of the best he's ever seen. Now... My skeptical part of that is it's a Polaroid, so there's definitely not going to be some digital manipulation. Mm -hmm. But Billy Meyer case, I know several others where they make incredible photos. Using like a glass the models green and glass stuff, whatever. Green, yeah, it's, like there's the no digital manipulations. Yeah, and it's 1980s. Balls. Yeah. It's 1980s. He wasn't going to do digital manipulation. But I think this could possibly be real. There's the other picture we showed last week. I wish I saved it in here. was like three lights, if I remember right, like out yeah. over the forest. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there's a more, maybe there's going to be more. And I, like I said, Nick Redford believes it's a psyop, like, and maybe he's right. Uh, and he had, he really makes a compelling case in his Rendlesham Forest book. Uh, but maybe it was, maybe it's a little both. I don't know. There's always a little bit of truth to both. Maybe. I don't know. Last thing is, I, you know, I usually do seven articles tonight. I had to add one more. Uh, sad to see Apollo 11 astronaut, Michael Collins, uh, died this week. Um, Collins was one of the three astronauts who uh, flew to the moon during the historic Apollo 11 mission in 1969. After being selected for NASA's third group of the 14 astronauts in 1963, Collins first flew into space as part of the Gemini program and would have flown to the moon as part and would have flown to the moon as part of the Apollo 8 mission in 1968 if it hadn't been for a back operation which <laughs> precluded him from going. Uh, perhaps fr uh, fruitlessly, this delay meant that he would end up being assigned to the pilot the command module for Apollo 11, the most historic space mission in human history. Now that we just got left as buzz. You know, Neil left us. We've we've talked about it on the show. You know, my fascination with the moon and the moon landing and um, the fact that I think these guys saw something that blew their minds and they couldn't talk about it. As I still think this day, I, you know, I I don't know what Michael Collins told his closest family members or if, if he did see anything. I wonder if that'll ever come out. I, I really think these guys saw something that they were sworn to secrecy. They could never talk about. And then that, that conference they do, that interview after they come back from the moon, to me, is always said it all. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know, true, true uh, uh, 
hero here. I mean, these guys risk their lives. Uh, and, and the people that are going to go to the moon now, <laughs> they're, still, they're just as much risking their lives. I don't, wouldn't trust any of that stuff. Oh, but, you know, I would love to go to space. I, I just want to wait until like 300 years in the future. we got warp drive and <laughs> it's a lot safer. I know I won't be around for that, right? But that's it for the World Wide Web of Weird. Our guest, Mary Medeiros, is going to join us uh, after this commercial break. We're going to talk about... Now, Mary, is your... Uh, I wanted to clarify you. The book in the uh, Akashic Realm, is that out for release yet? No, not yet. It's sort of okay. in edit editing phase. So not yet. Coming out Getting soon. Getting closer. Coming out though. soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to talk about that and many other things tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we'll be right back after the short commercial break, guys. And thank you to everybody who's sharing the show. Keep sharing out. Tell people. we got an interesting show tonight. They do not want to miss. And uh, like I said, we'll take your phone calls a little bit later in the show. We'll be right back. from beyond the cold case files so we hope you join us live on facebook and youtube every wednesday night at midnight eastern standard time we hope to see you there Bye bye Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. of the second kind, physical evidence of a UFO, close encounters of the third kind, contact. From Steven Spielberg, the director of Jaws, comes one of the most ambitious and unusual films ever made. And what you will see has never been seen before. It's a cosmic mystery crossing what many scientists believe will be the next threshold of human experience. It's called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It begins in an Indiana town and leads to one inescapable conclusion. We are not alone. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Certificate A. Now showing at the Odeon Leicester Square. is alive. Join us and take a walk on the weird side when you tune in to the Kingdom of Nye, hosted by Heather Wade, 
the finest in late night talk. Listen live free weeknights starting at 9 p.m. Pacific time at thekingdomofni.com, talkstreamlive.com, and the Paranormal Radio app. Want to take a ride? The International Chart Topping Haunted Horror of Haverford West has been described as terrifyingly real, a must-read, shocking and chilling brilliance, genuinely worrying, utterly frightening. Don't read before bed. Described as one of the spookiest writers out there, best-selling author G.L. Davies presents Haunted Horror of Haverford West, the true paranormal account that is shocking the world. Dare you enter? Dare you read? Haunted Horror of Haverford West is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kindle, and wherever books are sold. Pray you never have to live there. Do you like rock and roll? Do you enjoy a good story? Wish you were here. A rock fantasy is a book inspired by Badfinger. It will not only entertain you, but intrigue you. What is it about? Well, Thomas is searching for his bandmate and friend in heaven. And in spirit has helped pen the story. He meets an old friend and famous new ones on his afterlife voyage. Midwest Book Review said, Wish You Were Here, A Rock Fantasy. It is a book inspired by Badfinger. It's a quirky story by Joyce S. Isaacson and is a unique, original, and deftly crafted metaphysical novel that showcases the author's genuine flair for character and narrative-driven entertainment that is simply riveting from first page to last. Wish You Were Here, A Rock Fantasy is now available on tenantpublication.com, amazon.com in paperback and hardcover, and also on Kindle Unlimited. So check it out now. Wish you were here. A rock fantasy. Switch to DCS ranging. Two four zero. I'm on the profile. We're in the pipe. Five five five. Our guest is Mary Medeiros. Mary's successful career has spanned over 30 years in network television production and directing. She worked for CBS, NBC, and ABC television networks, garnering three Emmy Awards for direction and a Director's Guild of American Award. Uh, following a spiritual calling, Mary was led to the Akashic Records. She studied in the Center of Akashic Studies in Chicago, where she completed two certifications and is presently working as an advanced Akashic Records practitioner. She's writing three books on Akashic Records. Her first book in the Akashic Realm Conversations with the Divine offers insight and clarification from the Akashic realm about the common struggles of human beings today. Mary's work in her, uh, Mary's work in her own Akashic record has solidified her role as a transformational leader in the entertainment industry. She has just completed writing a spiritual epic film and scripted young adult sci-fi television series that will address issues in lives of teens today. I would definitely like to watch that. Mary is also uh, cited to direct three upcoming films as well. We're going to be talking about the Akashic records. Just to remind you guys, she, she does do readings. And you can definitely we'll get her website out, Spiritual Therapy by Mary.com. You can definitely get a reading from her after the show. <laughs> it's some scheduled point in time. But don't call it tonight for reading. Yes. Uh-oh. You're having a very bad audio problem. Uh, I hear that. Yeah. It's hiccuping. All right. Well, let's see. Sounds like a non Verizon connection. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, Rob, I'm you for a second. I want to hear what you sound like. Yeah, it's like, it's like, <laughs> like repeating yeah. or something. That's what I'm getting. Well, Oh, wow. That is the first. Okay, hold on. Yeah, that's a strange one. 
Mm -hmm. I'm still hearing it. Yep. Hmm, this is a new one. I don't know why you guys all sound when like... When you're uh, talking, audio. it skips. Mm -hmm. hmm. That is weird. Let me check something. Maybe you might have to restart the whole program. That would be awful. Uh, Mary, or, you're or on like Facebook. You're like you. I might have to send you an invite on there because I might have to repost everything if this is the case. I don't know. Will let me jump out and jump back in? Do you want me to also? Do we all leave? See, I don't know what that does. You'll have to start a new link. Yeah. Damn, I never had this happen. All these years doing this. Never had it do this. This is a new one. <laughs> it started in the middle of your, um, the, the rest of everything sounded okay, but then towards like the last ad, it started sounding like it was picking up when you got her, started reading her bio. It was almost like <laughs> you're talking and going like this. I heard it's I heard it skipping way before the bio. This what oh, you're describing right what place. you're describing, um, oh, Jamie. Great. Yeah. I'm trying to check. Uh, could could it be me? I no, sir, I don't think. No, so. it's not you. It's everybody. Okay. I mean, technically, but sometimes our guests have effects on technology too. I'm gonna try something here. See if this is going to change the setting for my network. Give me one second. I don't know Wait, if that's changing anything or not. Say something again. Testing. Yeah, you guys, I can hear it. Let me see. I'm going to try. You guys stay here. I'm going to leave and come back. Let me see if I can do that. Oh, it's not there. Mm -mm. I don't know if he can get back in, though, because I can't let him in. Right. So we might... Is that Rob coming back? Well, all right. I still hear no. you guys sound bad. Sit. All right. Well, it went away when you left. It went away when I left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let me leave and shut down my computer. I'll come back. You guys stay here. Sorry, Mary. I apologize. This That's okay. No problem. <laughs> hey, it's gone. <laughs> Okay, who's interfering? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Exactly. We get some interesting ones sometimes. Yeah. What, interferences? Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah. I'm not surprised. We have a couple guests that we know every time they come on, there's going to be some sort of something. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we didn't get something really weird last week with terry lovelace i know it's usually something happens mm -hmm. or there's helicopters over jason's house after the show <laughs> well that's what i was feeling that's what i was sensing it's uh you know earthly interferences yeah mm -hmm. facebook has been notorious for that lately cutting the shows off at really convenient times really when, yeah. yeah when guests yeah. talk about certain things Mm -hmm. Facebook will all of a sudden go, and then it's come right back. Mm. Well, they've been getting criticized for that. Yeah. Around the virus, people that are taking the vaccine, not whatever. And mm -hmm. uh, depending on what people are chatting about, they're getting cut off or they can't yep. share information. Doing their own fact checking. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right but you know when it comes down to it it's a free service and i guess they can just do what they want yeah i guess you know but without people on facebook Wait, they are trying to bring us all together you guys by the photo <laughs> frames if you have the i got vaccinated photo frame that's their part in bringing <laughs> us back together okay hey you all see right. 
and you guys don't sound no, that's like good. you're in a Verizon call. Oh my God. That required me to shut down my computer, which is shutting down a bunch of other programs I'm running, and restart the computer and hurry up and put them all back on. <laughs> get back on. So, Mary, welcome to the show. We've got enough delay. Thank to this. you. Jeez, I am wow. so sorry. Mm. Mercury and retrograde, what's going on? I mean, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I had a feeling too. I even like double checked my because they did an update on Microsoft. So I got on way early, like checked my audio. Everything's working great. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. And Here it was are. working. It was working really well for the whole, what, 40, 30, 35 minutes. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't like my ad break, I guess. <laughs> or my, my butchering of your bio. I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't didn't worry like about it. Murphy decided to stop by. Yeah, Murphy's Law. It, it, I or hate Facebook Murphy. just doesn't want you to read what you were reading. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not going to blame Facebook for this one. I, might oh, have been sure. Go my ahead. Inter I, I think it was I my will. internet because I, like, I did something. I reset my router while we did that, too. So I'm like, uh, so, so hopefully right, we're good. Right. All right. So, Mary, <laughs> welcome Hi. to the show. It, Hi, it is everybody. An honor to have you. It's an honor <laughs> to have you on, finally. Thank you. A uh, little flustered here. I'm so sorry. That, uh, but I'd like to start out, um, you know, people to get a little bit more from Jen, my butchered bio of you, uh, of who you are. You know, you work in the entertainment industry, uh, majorly, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. tell people how this all ended up leading to reading the Akasha records for people. Sure. Yeah. So um, most of, well, a large part of my career was working in, um, for the television networks in television, in, I mean, in New York and in Los Angeles as uh, in production and then eventually as a director. Um, and I have to say that when I was, this connects back to when I was really little, because when mm. I was really little, I always sensed a presence um, of what I now refer to as divine. I always knew, I just felt something that was like an inner knowing basically like um well it was also too like source when we refer to source universal yeah. source i always felt it was like a, yeah it wasn't inner knowing that there existed something at the at this that that was responsible for all the beauty that is on this planet because what we're generally being told these days is that everything's awful and everyone's kind of at each other and yeah, that seems about right that, yeah I mean, that's what the news is doing and whatever. And, and what I always sensed, even when I was little, that there was, that everything was really okay. And then I kind of, you know, went into my life, grew up as we all do, crazy teen years and all of that, went to college. And then I, and I went into television because I love storytelling. I always did. So I worked in television for quite some time and, and then eventually came out to the West Coast. Now, during that, during that time period, it's interesting, I had um, a lot of, uh, um, uh, abduction experiences, which is very interesting. Yeah, I um, definitely want to talk about that tonight. Yeah, and so, and I was very alone with it. It was in the 80s, 80s and the 90s, actually. Yeah. It didn't matter where I was. I had one in Ireland, I, all over the place. Ooh. And um, and what saved my life at that time was, was uh, Dr. John Mack and his oh, book, yeah. Ab Abduction. Right. Because there was a lot of like um, wackadoodles, I like to say, out there, you know, claiming all kinds of stuff. And I just couldn't figure out what to read that would help me because I, it's a very low, well, not so much now, but for me, it was really lonely because I was working in network television oh, yeah. and television news, which is very left brain. And you didn't talk about those things. So that was a large, at. Oh yeah. I mean, so I didn't, mean, yeah, yeah, very, I, I didn't that much, but then, um, and then what happened was, uh, I was always sensing like that I had, that I was on this planet to do something else more something more not an instead of what I was doing but in addition right. to what I was doing and so um, then I was having um, one of my routine psychic readings with a, a really good person that I w was going to at the time and she said to me um, in one of these readings hey there's this dude over your shoulder and I you know and I asked who is he and she goes wow he's really he's like a genie like kind of guy <laughs> and I'm like well tell me who he is and and she said well he's he's telling me that he oversees and protects your Akashic records. And I asked her, well, what are those? And she said, I don't know, but that's what he says he does. Hmm. And, um, and she said, she also said an interesting yeah. thing that, that he would feed me creative ideas. And she kind of indicated over my right side. And whenever I had very creative ideas with, with working with actors and they would say, wow, let's try that. Where did you get that idea? And I used to just sort of point to my right and go, I don't know. It came in. I just used to say that. So that affirmed that something was going on. 
And then I started to um, look into the records a bit. Still didn't follow the sign. I'll just say that <laughs> because I think that was the first sign. And then I was at a metaphysical bookstore that I used to frequent here in LA um, called the Bodhi Tree. And, um, and I, was in the, the, I was in the back room, the UFO section actually. <laughs> yeah. um, I would always wind up in, in those sections of bookstores. But anyway, in this other section, there was a book teetering off the shelf. And it was called How to Read Your, I pulled it down and it was How to Read Your Akashic Records. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to, like, I got to listen. So I bought the book and I was, I became, it was so easy. I started opening my records. I started to understand, well, when I read about it, it was something I knew from ancient yeah. time. Um, it was easy. It was so easy that I questioned it. But um the way it works for me is that I get, I do a sacred prayer and then I studied. I, I studied at the Center for Akashic Studies out of Chicago because I was led to that. It was like I had to now follow what I was being led to. And I did. And the more I followed it, the easier it became for me. And, um, and, and then I became an advanced um, practitioner in the Akashic Records. And, and um, my whole life began to shift as I was working in the records, because what the records do for us, it's, you know, I guess I should say right here that what the records are there, it's a, it's been around the record, Akashic records have been around since the beginning of time and they're a dimension of consciousness and they contain a vibrational record of every soul in its journey. And this is based on the idea that our souls incarnate and reincarnate and reincarnate right. the same soul comes back and back and back. Um, and so, I believed in that anyway, and I believe in source, and I believe that there's light and divine. I believe we are that, and that's what the records show us, and they help us connect back to our own divine selves, because when we open our own records, we're actually tapping into the divine aspect that's recorded already of our own soul's journey. So what happens is when I'm working as a practitioner, and I'm working with a client with their permission and have opened their records, what happens for me is I get blocks of thought. Sometimes I get images, yeah. I get past lives often, um, but I'll get blocks of thought that they use, it's quantum, and they use my way of speaking, my imagination, my way of um, being a human, I'll say, to convey through who that person is already on a divine level. So what it does is I, I equate it to a um a sprocket that can get out of its groove and then when we visit with our records our own records we meet that divine aspect where we remember who we are and that sprocket during these sessions just comes right back and we line right back up and it reflects in in so many ways i mean we could talk forever about this the different things that can happen when we're we're in our records um and and the records are uh, governed by, I should say governed, but there are three absolutes of the records, fear not, judge not, and resist not. And those are very important because the records, it's not, they're not ghosts and spirits. They're not creepy right. crawler things coming. It's not dark. There's never anything wrong. There's it no is judgment. Oh, no judgment, always light, 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 because that's what we are inherently that innately we are light. Um, and then of course, Eckhart Tolle's, uh, idea of the ego conscious kind of gets us in trouble a little bit in the collective ego conscious, which is another conversation. But when we <laughs> are out, <laughs> that's right. That's right. And when we're out of touch with our own and divine is, is it, you know, by divine, I don't mean church at all. Right. <laughs> I don't even mean spiritual. It's just divine. is something, it's just light. It's, it's the source light of everything. And it's in a and it's quantum and it it is around and within and without all the time. And of course there's no time in quantum land, right? So that's who <laughs> we are. And when we visit or receive a reminder of that through our records, and we do receive it, it's energy, we get it. It's so amazing. Like it just never ceases to amaze me what happens when I'm working with people in their records, I expand, they expand, they're reminded who they are. People have created uh, new careers out of what they were, they didn't know why they were unhappy and out of their readings, all of a sudden they're guided back into why they're here. Because the idea of behind the records is that we, our souls cho choose each lifetime 
to do certain things. We're not coming in according to the records is what right. I've learned. We're, n- we're not choosing to come in and have painful lives. We might come in, choose to come in as a soul to have experiences that equate to some kind, t- sometimes pain and trauma, but th- that pain and trauma always ha- plays a part in the bigger journey the soul has chosen to participate in at a particular lifetime, like 9-11, those 3,000 plus souls that left. They're, they part- Every one of those souls on some level participated in a grand design of expansion. And that's a hard pill for people to swallow. Yes, it is. When you, when you get into past lives and the cash of records and you, somewhat you're treading in the area of predestination for some people. Um, it is a hard pill for people to swallow that somebody would choose to come here and live a life where they they die in a situation like 9-11, you know. Uh, it, it's hard for me to swallow, even though I do innerly believe this. You, you talk about inner knowing. I don't know if you heard me earlier in the show. Um, when I was a kid, I, would, I, I have a vivid imagination ever since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I, I, when I would read books, I would like, I guess there's a little bit of Quantum Leap influenced me as a kid or whatever, but I would picture myself like, oh, I bet... I, I I don't know. I had this imagination where I imagined like when you die, you could probably there's there's this place with all these all these fictional books, all these stories, and all these scenes you can just jump in and live it. You know, mm-hmm. like you can live these stories. I would picture in my head, and that's like this book I'm reading. I could one day I could live this experience in another life in some way. Anything's possible. I thought that in my my head before I knew about quantum physics or past lives or it was just all inner. Like I just had this, my I, I mean, my imagination was wild, but I had this like inner knowing that we live other lives that everything's possible there's multiple worlds it just was something like ingrained in me <laughs> at a very young age i don't know how i mean i have a very open family well, i'm a, you know that were let me discover not a super religious family at all mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So well i, I can make a part. suggestion to you that actually you're the way that you describe your reading that is that you were reading who you already were were it's possible and that's yeah. why you resonated you know the other thing when you mentioned imagination there was one time in when i was where I was, because I had to, I in my studies I opened my own records lots to, uh, to heal past wounds because the records really work very well for us to release and tr- allow our past perceived wounds and traumas to transmute into the light, right? And I, I once in the beginning of my work I was in my own records I was on the my computer because I would just sit on my computer say my it's a sacred prayer to open my records and then i would listen and i'd ask questions and i asked is this real or is this my imagination (laughs) and i thought i was going to hear in the block of thought i thought i was going to hear no it's real mary and no they said yes of course it's your imagination because it's the greatest aspect of you and it all allows us we use your imagination to be able to share um and participate in um you know a soul, a, a soul and an individual reacquainting themselves with their own soul's journey. So your, you just mentioned you, 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 your imagination. That's, that's a great way for non-physical to communicate with us because our imaginations are not there. It's not our minds manipulating it, right? That's not kind of not what imagination yeah. is. We experience our imagination when we just sort of sit and it feels like we're just kind of like, listening to something that kind of is coming from us right and and that is what's real <laughs> it's funny well, we call you, it imagination but i what my understanding is that's what's real well i mean like throughout my life i would when i was a little kid i remember writing this whole story about how they're gonna make this you know dinosaur park and you go there and like they're making dinosaurs <laughs> and like i had it was like one of my first stories I've ever written i was like and then jurassic park comes out I'm like man matrix uh-huh. i had that when i was a kid i had like the whole like story i wanted to write a story about people living in that they didn't know that it wasn't real and all this stuff and the matrix comes out like like oh, my imagination cool. you know i mean there was even one time i'm a huge star wars fan and uh i had a full vivid dream of the was the second prequel like one of the scenes in it before it ever was released or any preview ever came out i was sitting in the theater and i'm like that's the scene i dreamed that's exactly that's this creature in it. Everything that's happened. I, I mean, I've had a lot of precognitive dreams, but I'll have ones about entertainment. And I went to school for film. I wanted to do film. I wanted to direct. Well, and no all wonder. That. Mm-hmm. And, but but I've always had an interest in stories and writing. I've never completed anything. 
I mean? I've never never completed college for film, but I always have like this in like hidden like like even movies. My wife can't stand watching movies with me sometimes because I can predict the endings of all these movies. Like mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. never forget seeing seeing a uh, side uh um uh what was it i see dead people uh what's that movie oh right um uh, mm, you, uh spoiler the sixth alert. sense, the sixth sixth sense. sense. Yeah. spoiler alert, but i remember sitting with a girlfriend and going i, I think bruce willis is dead this is like 20 minutes into the movie <laughs> she's like whatever shut up and then in the movie she's punching me in the arm like i hate you i don't want to see a movie with you. you ruined it <laughs> yeah but well, that, there's i don't a, know there's a there's also um a, th a lot of people who are saying this um i think elizabeth gilbert wrote this in her book the big magic is that the uh, ideas are uh, exist in the ethers. They're out there yeah. and they're floating around and they're, they have like quantum signatures to them, right? They're, they're made of something and not, they went, and anyway, so they're floating around the planet yeah. and they're looking for a match. So it's, it's likely that those who can, like what happened for you, what you described, that that essence was, was going, Jason's a match and you saw it. And you saw it. I could have rode and, Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> Michael and so, you know, is that still happening for you? Like, do you get things like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you and write I, them down? My, no, maybe... Sometimes I do, but, uh, you know, I'm not writing the full manuscript. I, what, what I need to do is, like, write one of these scenes and get it out there before somebody else does it so I can make a buck, right? Well, uh, we should. Well, we will. And we will open your records. That's an offering from me to you. Oh, and we'll I see what it. comes what comes forward. Because, um these all of these aspects of our lives that we go like hmm what is that or this has always happened what's so cool about the records is when we look from within our own records and i what i didn't say earlier is that what we access when we open our records are these light energies they're not beings and they're not spirits or ghosts they're light energies the way uh abraham hicks is pure positive consciousness um, and so these are light energies and they're in the form of what we refer to as the ma our masters, teachers, and loved ones. And the masters oversee our records. These are energies. Um, our teachers are light energies that come in and out of our life in a lifetime for life lessons that we've chosen. It's all about choice that we've chosen to come in for, whether it's self-love could be one. Um, those are the teachers and loved ones yeah. are light energies that participate in this entourage, this light entourage of the records. And they, the loved ones are, are those who we experienced love with any, any it could be teacher, friends, lovers, um, our family, they're on the other side now. And what I want to say is because a lot of people ask this and somebody might ask this, what to compare it with a psychic reading, is this a psychic reading? No, right. the loved ones, and I will sometimes get an energy. I'll, I'll be like, I, there's a, a grandmother energy and she's very powerful and it'll never fail. Somebody will say that I, that's my grandmother. She was this, 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 whatever. Um, they're holding, they're sitting in this, in the divine quantum space of who we are. So they're holding the divine energy. That's their role. They don't come and chit chat. Psychic readings are more like, back and forth with yeah. the other somebody on the other side. Um, and those are also valid and wonderful, but that's more of a chit chat. This is more like they're sitting in the soup, so to speak, of the of our divine, of our records. Um, and so that's the entourage that we're calling on. And I, and I, it's a very subtle energy that I can feel. Sometimes I'll get a little tonal shift in my ear um, that's aff affirming, or sometimes I'll get major chills during a reading, head to toe when yeah. we've hit on something that's just you know amazing for that person um so i just wanted wanted to say that well you mentioned i i had a question from linda who's i guess she's experienced or uh, works with the akashic realm as well she says yes mary does she see orbs good question yeah. um no not me with my eyes yeah <laughs> but quite often um my photographs will have orbs and I don't mean during a yeah. reading, but just in general. So I have experienced orbs myself and around people, you know, like, and it's amazing well, when you take photographs, it could be a party, whatever. And then it's, oh, it's never right then that you see them, at least for me. And then also I'll be looking at the photograph and go, oh my God, look, and there'll be orbs, you know, here and there. But I, no, I don't. And not during Akashic readings, I don't. Some people as Akashic readers will actually see literally see things some will hear and and some get 
as I like to say, blocks of thought. I mean, I'll get words that have, yeah. and I have, I have no idea why that word's coming through. And then the person will go, oh my God. And it has meaning for them because where we're, basically you're taught when you're in your, when you're having your records read, you're, you're having a conversation with, you are the client with the yeah. divine aspect of themselves. I'm just the pass through, right? It's a higher self. It's the mm -hmm. you, the, the the kernel of you, because you've lived all these other lives. I'm I'm a complete. Just so you know, I'm a complete believer in past lives because my own personal experience uh, I had mm -hmm. in my life. I felt like they were gifts. Honestly, I do. Mm -hmm. um, two very vivid dreams. Like they were super emotional, s vivid, very vivid, and real. Um, of two, I believe, are past lives, and they both explain a lot about why I'm wired the way I've always been wired about my mm -hmm. lack of trust of authority, government and religion <laughs> and, and, and my, my yes. staunch hatred of racism. And, uh, and, and, mm. and, and, I, and I, I'm also dealing in a society right now that's going way overboard with the whole racial crap right now. But I, you know, ever since I was a little kid, it, I could never understand how people could, you know, judge people by the color of skin. I can't believe you're saying this. This was everything you just named about you. That's that's my reality, including really? being little. Yes, my father was Archie Bunker. He was. <laughs> we used to. I mean, it. People in the house thought it was funny, but I didn't. It was very painful. It was because a comedy series. <laughs> he hated. He hated. My father hated cultures. Well, obviously, he, he was uncomfortable. There was something about him. I mean, now yeah. I know. But 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 it was very very painful for me growing up because as a child, as you just sort of said, I didn't understand it. I don't understand hatred. I don't understand hating someone for because they're a different whatever. I just never got it. Like I don't have that me gene either. in me. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm wired that way. Well, one, mm -hmm. two, the both, I'll just tell you really quick, uh, the dreams I had one, I was a, a little black girl and cool. I was beaten to death by my white slave owning father. Wow. And I felt every blow. It was very physical. And I had other dreams of the woman was my mother in that. That were very, very personal and vivid. And I didn't un understand it until I had that dream of being that little girl. I'm like, she was my mother in a past life. Well, I just got chills. Was. And Whoa. then the other one, I was a Buddhist monk. And I, it's hard for me to trace down. We wore black robes. I've traced it down to like the Vietnam area, area maybe. I don't know. And I'm not even sure what time period. I know people had to have rifles. Um, mm. but, uh, I, uh, basically snitched on the temple guru. I don't know what you would call him, the head of the temple mm -hmm. for opium use and thought, you know, get him out of the temple. And I felt betrayed by him. And then next thing you know, the whole temple is being raided. Every, every, every monk is being shot dead and I'm running for my life. And I, the last part is me stopping as these soldiers are up on this cliff and I, it's just burned in my mind and the fear and the adrenaline. I remember waking up screaming from that dream and feeling like I wow. got shot in the chest. Um, so that explains my, my, my total lack of trust with religion and my lack of trust with the government. <laughs> you know, well, there. It, it, yeah. And the, 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 um, the meaning of the, of the, of past lives for us is something that else that I've learned recently is that, you know, our DNA, which is, we now know, you know, I, you know uh, it used to be 96% of our DNA scientists still refer to as junk DNA, junk which is DNA. such a, oh, I know, it's such junk. a joke. Like, yeah, right. well, oh, they, we can't identify, so we're going to call so it's it junk. junk again. Yep. Well, that's science. What I, right, that's science. So what I've come to learn is, um, and I, and you know, we know when we tap into the truth, I know you all know this, you just know. When you hit on something and it's the right. truth, you just know your whole, like, bing, like time stops for a second. And it's like, okay. And we got to hold on to that. We got to trust our intu intuitive hits like that. But um, our so our DNA, because it's quantum, it moves through each lifetime energy doesn't die that we know for real right so we can actually access aspects of our dna for pat from past lives right now we can, like it was suggested re i forget where i heard this or read it um that an example let's say someone gets a diagnosis of cancer right. and they know and they uh, open their records let's say and they discover or do past life experiences and they may discover that in a past their, that some past life there was no cancer well, that means their their DNA contains quantumly no cancer. So by intention and knowing, simply that, you can actually call on that part. You can just access that part of your DNA. And what happens is a lot of people, because we're linear thinkers too, and we struggle with being third dimensional and then everything else, right? right. What happens is then people will ask the question, well, but how do I do it? What do I do? 
All you have to do is know that it's true and go, I call on, I invoke the part of my DNA that knows no disease or whatever. You could probably do this with uh, COVID too. Um, but Watch it's just you. you're like, going to get this video taken down real quick. <laughs> I know, right? Uh -oh. there it goes. <laughs> I don't. Well, yeah, screw them. But, but we can we can access our th that as the quantum parts of our DNA that will benefit us in this in this, this now time. She said cool. benefit, benefit. She didn't say cure. <laughs> <laughs> that's damn algorithms. Well, there, um, <laughs> there, well, there is it's no. It's all right. There is no disease. I'm oh say that. boy! Now you're really gonna get us knocked off. <laughs> 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 uh, but you know, well, this, this is the thing. I, I I believe that you know. I'll, I like I said. I've always had this like like you said inner knowing. Like let things sit right with me with what, with what you say. And um, I've even when I was a kid, I believe that I had lived other lives. Like I just had that feeling, like the inner knowing. But I was raised in a household with a mom who later became a Buddhist and a dad cool. who's wow. you know into quantum physics. And he has like a lot of these quantum physics books I would like get into and read and heart, half understand. You know, so I grew up in a very open-minded household. You know, other people don't. You know, they grow up in a mm -hmm. very you know religious stringent household and discover these things later in life. Um, but I, I, you know, to me having those two dreams the reason i call them gifts is that it was i just knew it was knowing the moment i woke up that i was that person mm -hmm. i was mm -hmm. i mean i was a little little black girl and and you know, my youtube's gonna take that down too right uh <laughs> racial <laughs> appropriation <laughs> i know um this past lives come on uh right, you know these days <laughs> But when you get into past lives, and we, we've had uh, Chris Leon, who's a past life regression therapist, and uh, does has a number of books called Life in the Past Lane, and he's done he did a past life regression with me. It was really interesting, and and for that it doesn't cure it. It, uh, it eliminates certain health issues, and I did have an experience with one of the, the regression where I was also a witch trapped in a dungeon, like basically like I'd been accused of being a witch, probably was. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And I, and I think, and I remember, and I, yeah, I, I, you know, it wasn't evil or anything like that, but they broke my hands. They broke my hands. And I've had this problem where my, for what was leading up to that, where my finger joints would just swell so bad or throb really bad. Like just my, this pain in my hand, this ghost pain in my hand. And uh, so he addressed that and I did that and it, it did go away until the other day. I started to get the pain again. Sometimes it comes back and I'm going to do another session with him. But it's interesting. He's had people like, be eliminate uh, uh, certain ailments by diving into their past life. You talk about DNA right. like that and the quantum mm -hmm. DNA. Uh, that, that's that's one way. The other way that we can is, um, uh, or, or, or what when we take an Akashic pers perspective on either past lives, past life trauma, or even childhood trauma, what happens is the divine moves on the spoken word so as we, and that's why there can be ancient tomes that right. you pick them up. And if you read from them, ancient texts or Sanskrit like or mantra, or I'll say, I'm just going to say possibly parts of the Bible, but anyway, there, that something happens because the divine is it, the spoken word has energy, right? And it was spoken somewhere and written down. So um, what we, what we can do with past lives is, or trauma is we can access it, and Linda Howe, who I studied with, not Linda Moulton Howe, that's the ufologist, but Linda Howe of the Akashic Records, she uses the term we can mine, M-I-N-E. We can mine those experiences, and we bring them into our now, and they transmute, they become powerful opportunities. So we don't have to shine a light on it and go, ew, and we don't have to get rid of it, because you know traditional psychology does that, like, like let's look at trauma, bang away at it. Then we reactivate it and then like make it bad and make it go away. No, because the idea in, in the, in what the Akashic records teach us is that everything that we've lived is an opportunity. There's no mistakes. There's no, that's so we could get rid of shame out of that one. There's no mistakes. Everything plays a part in why we're here. And it really does. We can look even, even the people who've had awful, my, I'm an example. So I grow up with a, you know, racist, very strong, I'm going to just be nice, my strong-minded dad who hated every culture for some reason or was afraid of them, I don't know. But um, now that has infused my work and concern and in my writing, because I'm writing fictional stuff now and writing, I wrote a screenplay and I'm writing a series. Yeah. It's infusing my work with 
probably what you're talking about. When you talked about racism bothers you, well, it wouldn't bother you if you were not that black girl, probably. I would so hope it, it becomes me, but... it well it becomes a gift. Yeah, and then it informs how you work and how you reach. I mean, look at you're on a platform right now. You reach out to people and you have people come forward and speak and you're bringing truth and you're questioning and doing what if, which is wonderful. If we all could just go, what if, instead of going, no, 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 whatever, that would be great. I know. It's right? the ending of knowledge, saying, I know, you know, it, yes. and then you've just stopped yourself from learning. I, totally. I, 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 I always go with the, 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 the predetermined uh, aspect of that. I don't know. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on right. a lot of theories a lot of speculation yeah. a lot of questions but do i know heck no no so um so what we can so when we have an when we have that akashic perspective on events that we thought were horrible um or we experienced horror it's not we're not we're not disregarding that like there, we have trauma we've all experienced trauma whether it's in past lives or in this lifetime or right now right um it's real they're not saying it's not real, but they're, but we can look at the energy of it. The energy of the trauma has value to it. And it will, in, and it always 100% of the time in the records informs us and reminds us who we are. And it can become a powerful tool in our little quantum toolkit. That's what happens. Uh, well, you, you know, the, the other crux of that, you know, I, I was a victim in both those cases but other people go back and i'm sure i have it in my past lives you know you find out mm -hmm. you were an evil person and you mm -hmm. murdered people or you did horrible mm -hmm. things like it's like we all play characters it's you know point i don't want to say we're detached or we're, we're not real you know we're not right. we're who we are but it's like we take on a character i mean i mean what was hitler's i mean got to bring up the hitler thing but you know what was hitler's you know mission to learn in that situation you know that that, that that's the hard pill for again for people to swallow sometimes when you get into people that are just you know seem irredeemable well when we look in the right i mean i'm trying to think a lot i mean what happens is i have a lot of healers come to me interestingly enough but when um the second book that the records has encouraged me to write is to open the records of people in prison um who are about to come out on parole and open their records and and um because because generally what happens is when people make mistakes in the eyes of the law and then you know you go to a court and then you get shut away or whatever um what are we really judging them about and why what what they did we're not saying that the murder is okay i'm aware of that what the, we're not condoning murder is what i'm saying right but when we look when we like if i'm if i were to speak to a murderer or i've had people with past lives where they were murdering people right that's what yeah and exactly. then in this lifetime are they a murderer not necessarily mm. sometimes they become lawyers and they're defend they're you know working on the opposite side let's say but they right. have a, a very grand understanding of that arena because of their past life and and they might when they find out they were a murderer they might go oh my god that's awful let me get rid of it but no because there's a an essence and an energy to someone who murders and we can look at the energy of it not the action there's a difference there's, there's a difference so well, it that, yeah. that, that's the thing that's that's always when you get into past lives you know there's a lot of i i i you know hard pills for people to swallow and those mm -hmm. the, the 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 evil of man you know or woman too mm -hmm. uh what what they can do you know why people want to say well they go to hell they burn yeah, in hell right. for eternity i'm like what good does that do you know you can only burn so long <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be better we... for them to come back and try again and maybe learn from the mistakes they made in the past to be something better or new. Wouldn't that be a much beautiful, better picture than them well, burning here's hell the for thing. eternity? A lot of the Redemption? things, yes. And a lot of the things that we call certain, certain things in the Bible, religions, um, the idea that we come in with sin if you're a Catholic. When I was a kid, I was like, I didn't even, it made no sense. I was like, that can't make sense. If there's this right. God or whatever that loves everyone, why would a being create people that came in all You're nasty? wrong. Yeah, you're yeah exactly. And you're going right to suffer the, the rest of your <laughs> life. Right. So um, we, ha I think what this has come from, what I've lear I'm learning is that it's perceptions, it's human perceptions come e evolving from ego conscious. You know, Eckhart Tolle refers to the ego conscious as a, a monster, and then he giggles about it. It is a tricky monster. It 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 fears its own demise, and and I have a whole chapter in my book on 
the ego conscious. They actually address it a lot. And it's, it, it's the root of it all. Like, you know, Satan and, 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 um, hell, um, we could get thrown off again off Facebook, but I don't believe in hell. I don't understand it that way. What I, I understand Facebook has a problem with that. No, they may not have a problem with that. You're right. <laughs> but what I understand and what I've learned from my work in the records is that um, when we lose, when when we forget who we are, when we forget that we actually are all light energy, right, living in a human body, and when we disconnect from that, knowing that we are we are source. It's not source of some bearded man in the clouds source is us is it the all it isness when we know that we're, then things start to line up and things are good when we lose touch with that then we're off somewhere else and that's where we start taking actions that are harmful to each other that are not we're we're away from knowing that we're we're divine and that's what i think is what's being called as darkness, hell, all of that. It's when we veer away from knowing that we're light. I don't know. I mean, it's like once I learned all this, I wasn't afraid of things anymore. I had a brother that bullied me like crazy and I was scared. I'm still sometimes scared of the dark. I really am. He used to hide under the bed. All those, hmm. you know, those movies where the something's in the closet and it comes out. That would be my brother. He would wait until I was almost falling asleep and then jump out with a mask on and scare the crap out of me. Jeez. So, oh yeah. So, one of my brothers did that. And, oh, wow. And um, I took it into my adult life. I was afraid of the well, dark. Well, make you jumpy. Yeah, right. And I was, you know, I was, I really believed that there were all these spooky, awful things. But then when I started to, to work in this arena, I was like, no, I took, took a deep breath because I always knew. I always knew that there is this greater, wonderful source. And that is what we all are. Look at what happens when people come together in the name of love. We can go through the history of mankind. It is the most amazing thing. Nothing can stomp that out. I challenge anybody to tell me that you can stomp out love. You cannot. You know, love creates, hatred destroys. I mean, it's as simple yes. as that, you know? Yes. Um, you know, one of the things, I, when I was a little kid, I used to, you know, be fascinated with the idea of, you know, that we lived before and past lives and God. But when I saw, I, I, I used to think, well, what is consciousness? I, I mm -hmm. deep thoughts of Jason Bland at eight or nine or 10 years old. Uh, I saw a movie called Sybil. She was, uh, it was a an old, like 1970s TV mini uh, series movie um, about a woman who had like 21 personalities based off a true story. Oh, Sybil. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You've heard of Sybil, you know, I remember and that. Yeah. When I was a kid, I got fascinated. I scared me. That movie scared me. Yeah. <laughs> so bad and i caught it on tv with my i was at a babysitter's and she just had it on probably shouldn't let me watch it but it scared me <laughs> but i what i got fascinated with started thinking about it, is like well she's she has all the I, I was like what is multiple personality somebody can have multiple people in their head what i thought think thinking about it deeply is all this came when she was locked in a cupboard by her mother i mean she was tortured right. many different ways but her mom would lock her in total darkness and, and sensory deprivation and what would her brain do it start to split into mm -hmm. new people it created a new world and mm -hmm. you've seen I, and later in life I, I got really into reading about people with post-traumatic syndrome people who are uh, uh pow's were tortured people under mm -hmm. sensory deprivation how their mind would split like create new personalities or new worlds within their own mind when they're in this sensory deprivation like sybil and i've always thought that that is what consciousness does if you leave consciousness alone with no more input what does it do it creates its own world it does that when you go to sleep when you go to sleep, you have mm -hmm. dreams. There's other people in your dreams. Well, those other people are you, you mm -hmm. know, unless you're unless you're astral traveling or actually well, that, doing something right, else. That's true. But that's it, possible. But if, if but if in theory a dream is your mind making a scenario, you're in it. You're talking to so and so in the dream, but that that so and so you're talking to is still your own brain talking back to you. You know, true. You're right. The, the brain can create its own con separate consciousness. Yes. Yeah, that's trippy. You know what else is trippy? It just kind of popped in. That series, the uh, the Black Mirror. Oh, oh, I love Black Mirror. I can't I watch Black that Mirror. at night. I just can't. Be, you know why? It makes you fear for humanity. Right, exactly. Because at, at what's posed, proposed rather in those, in those episodes are um, either where we're going or where we are. They're yeah. calling. They're referring to it as the modern Twilight Zone. 
Yeah, I modern day it. Twilight Zone, and um, it's a yeah, warning. Well, <laughs> yes, it very well written, but really trippy, like that freaky stuff. I, I, can't, I just can't do it at night. <laughs> oh, I know, I did that once. It kept me up all night. It was the fifteen? See? Was it fifteen million merits or what it was? This episode where the guys, you know, they all have to ride the bike to create. Power. Yes, and I remember like, that can't one. Stop the ads from coming in, and he ruins the girl he's in love with's life by getting her on a talent show. It, it, that that episode traumatized me. That traumatized you know? me too. I could not sleep that night. Yep. Because I had, there's a feeling like that could be our future. This kind of craziness. Oh, absolutely. And those writers, I mean, who knows what they're tapping into, by the way. I, I, I often, me. yeah, like like Steven Spielberg and Close Encounters mm -hmm. of the Third Kind. I mean, when I saw that, I sobbed in the theater because I knew it. I was that character of, you know, um, what's his name? Richard at Dreyfus. The, yes, Dreyfus. And, you know, when those little beings come out and then he goes... And the Frenchman says, "We were just talking says, about this last week." Actually, really, Steven Spielberg I, coming up again here. Yeah, yep. yep. And and like, wh what did he? What anyone who worked think, on that film? What were they tapping into? That's what I think. I, he, I think he wasn't just subconscious tap. I, I, I've always said I think Steven Spielberg has some kind of government tie-in. Because look, look how we, how you know, we right before Spielberg, before Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a movie buff. All the movies were generally aliens are coming to invade. We're all gonna die, you know. <laughs> you know, Steven mm -hmm. Lord comes around. They're all friendly and taking Richard Dreyfuss up to take a trip in their ship. And ET's got a glowing finger and a, you know. But that's my and experience. And these pieces. But the, the, mm -hmm. you see, but they're trying to change public perception from the nineteen fifties right. and sixties of this alien invasion. We're all gonna die. And oh my God, I mean, because I mean, yep. if we're still in that mindset right now with you know actual Pentagon some admittance that there's UFOs in the sky. Imagine that admittance. Back in the 1960s or 50s when they had all these like, you know, War mm -hmm. of the Worlds that the people mm -hmm. like, you know, really would lose their minds. Right. But we've right. been conditioned now to be like, oh, yeah, aliens are cool. And I, I always say there's just two in in what I've watched, two films. And one is E.T. I mean, because that's not about an E.T. Yes, it is. But it's about a boy's first experience with love. That's what that movie's about. Right. And it happens to be an E.T. And it rips our hearts apart. And we, you know, do we love the ET? Of course we do. Is you know, he's, does he does he like does he love Elliot? Yes. So you know, the creation of that was brilliant. And Close Encounters of the Third Kind for me is another beautiful depiction of what we are always being shown in media are the you know the the gooey teeth and aliens coming out of our bellies and stuff. And it's like I am so tired of that. I really am. <laughs> I'm an aliens fan. Sorry. <laughs> Really oh, you Scott. are. <laughs> yes, but you know, I mean, a Prometheus, great movie. Uh, but <laughs> but I but I love Steven Spielberg. You know, my favorite, and I always bring this up to every person in the alien subject is: Have you ever seen his miniseries called Taken? By Spielberg oh. came out in the two, early two thousands. I might have seen a little bit of that because I remember the title, and I would have jumped on that. It's all about alien abductions. Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Yeah, and I I tell you, he's got inside track he's got an interest for sure like mm -hmm. you know I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if you watched the steven spielberg's house and you saw books on abductions and ufos and like a secret little stash of interest because he he, he knows he's definitely in in it he is taken as such a a perfect picture of like the yeah he's he's on the inside um have you ever had mary rodwell on your show that name sounds familiar but no yeah I don't think so. she's written several books she's worked with children uh, uh, experiencers and uh, over that I mean lots of them she's written yeah. many many books she lives in Australia she's a wonderful guest to have on because she talks yeah look look her up Mary Rodwell, Mary Rodwell. and she, I think one of her books is called Chosen um, I don't know I have all her books and I've met her she does hypnotherapy as well but she's discovered just you know like these kids that are coming in and they're they're speaking languages that no one can decipher. And, you know, the clicking sounds like aliens. They're dr all drawing the same ships, the same, you know, it, and, and they're from all over. And it's like, okay, what's happening here? Um, or having, and a lot of these children, in her experience, they have psychic abilities. They have, um, they can see the future. They, are, they see the planet in a good way. They see they see ways they're coming up with ways to improve our planet, right? Like indigo children. Yeah, it's like that, that, except ET related. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, her work well, is I fabulous. Mean, indigo children is ET related in a sense. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I, 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 we've gotten into the whole aspect of aliens and the afterlife. 
we can mm -hmm. get into more of that because we're about on a commercial break. So that's going to be a whole mm -hmm. other rabbit hole. But, um, <laughs> but you know, that th that's what always interests me. I, you know, I, I say it's paranormal soup. I believe all these scenes are connected, you know, when it comes to yes. ghosts and Bigfoot and aliens, I believe they're all connected. They're all swimming in the same soup. We just don't know it yet. We don't I know agree. what the connection is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, you know, the Kashuk realm, you know, this written record, it's not just for humans, right? I mean, we might have, we've lived past lives on alien planets and some of these kids could have memories from that, right? Um, yes, uh, yes, um, we can, I, like, I've opened records for pets, um, it's anything that's in public domain, because then it's etched in the divine library, <laughs> I don't right. know what to call it, you know, it's a quantum field, um, I don't know, you know, it's, a, that's an interesting question, because I've opened my records about my ET experiences, and my own be light energies have not said no whatever they're they're more like um this is a part of who you are that's what i received so yes we can get into more of that when we come mm -hmm. back we got to go to commercial break and we will also open up the phone lines for you guys remember i'm not doing readings tonight but if you want to call in ask a question share your experience if you've had a akashic realm reading before or, or do you want some advice on how to look into the akashic realm on your own time to call in we'll get those phone numbers out to you when we come back from the short commercial break of sensory deprivation and hallucinatory drugs. The subject of the experiment is himself, and the experiment is out of control. Ken Russell's Altered States, a film that must not be missed, is in the West End now. Altered States, Certificate X. Do you wish for more paranormal and spiritual content? The Paranormal Chronicles magazine is a free digital magazine crammed with the very best in paranormal and spiritual articles and features. No sign-up, no subscription, just free reading and knowledge for you. Read today at www.theparanormalchronicles.com forward slash magazine. Oh, come on. I'm Southern, but... Um, nope. That'll do. Hello, I am Kat Hobson, host of Paranormal Experience here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I enjoy having guests from all areas of the paranormal, from ghosts to ufology to cryptids and beyond. You'll find some of the best researchers in their fields bringing you some great information. Join me on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 p. Eastern here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Night is alive. Join us and take a walk on the weird side when you tune in to the Kingdom of Nye, hosted by Heather Wade, the finest in late night talk. Listen live free weeknights starting at 9 p.m. Pacific time at thekingdomofnye.com, talkstreamlive.com, and the Paranormal Radio app. Wanna take a ride? Join us. Every Wednesday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time for Weird Wednesday at the live stream with your hosts Jamie, the Living Dead Girl, and Rob, the Phantom, where we'll talk about all things paranormal, including zodiac, astrology, tarot card and oracle card readings, live ghost boxing and spirit communication where we'll do Voices from Beyond the Cold Case Files. So we hope you join us live on Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday night 
at midnight Eastern Standard Time. We hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Paranation Magazine is a new paranormal magazine based out of Denver, Colorado. Our goal isn't just to give you the best paranormal content out there, but to promote paranormal unity. We're doing this by giving everyone an opportunity to tell their stories and to share their experiences. For more information, follow us on Facebook at Paranation Magazine and soon ParanationMag.com. I've Never Met a Dead Person I Didn't Like is the extraordinary travels of a young, alone, and broke psychic in the highly anticipated new book from internationally renowned psychic, medium, medical intuitive, and best-selling author, Sherry Dillard. Critics have described I've Never Met a Dead Person I Didn't Like as an engrossing memoir, an empowering story of how a broken girl came to accept her psychic gift, a refreshing and fun read, I've Never Met a Dead Person I Didn't Like is available through Amazon, Kindle, Barnes & Noble, and wherever books are sold. Tired of school? Who is Joan of Arc? Noah's wife? Like to travel? Let's go back into history. Let's reach out and touch someone. Want to meet people in the past? Put them in the Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden? Excellent! Execute them! Oh, yes. Then hitch a ride with George Carlin, Keanu Reeves, and Alex Winter in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure from Orion Pictures. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is forty-two. Forty-two? Yes, yes, I thought it over quite thoroughly. It is, it's forty-two. It would have been simpler, of course, to have known what the actual question was. But it was the question. The ultimate question. Of everything. That's not a question. Only when you know the question will you know what the answer means. You're listening to Paranormal Soup, bringing you the weird every Sunday night. Call into the show and join the discussion. The call-in lines are 219-230-4444 or 260-225-9419 or by Skype caller ID 00 jbland oo or jbland paranormal soup. And now to your host, Jason Bland. Tonight's guest is Mary Madeira. She is uh, going to have an upcoming book called In the Akashic Realm, Conversations with the Divine. It's coming out. Uh, we're talking about the Akashic Records or the Akashic Realm. Uh, it's you know this ultimate place where all our lives, past lives, all that knowledge is held and stored. Uh, I've, we've talked. We've had so many different guests have mentioned it or bring it, uh, or it's come up in the conversation. But tonight we're really getting into what it means. That she does readings. Now we're going to take your phone calls. But no readings tonight. You know, now she has a website. If you want to get a reading, you can go to spirittherapybymary.com. We'll get her information what you have to do to get a reading from her. Uh, I definitely want to get a reading from her after talking about all this for sure. Uh, but we're talking about what is the Akasha realm? How can it change your life? And, you know, and what aspects does it play? I mean, we, we're going to get into this whole alien subject as well. You know me, I have to. Uh, but the phone lines are open, guys. Go ahead and call in, but let's get back to our guests.
So you were talking about in the 80s, you had uh, abduction experiences. <laughs> yes, lots now, of them. Mm -hmm. Really interested in this because, I mean, for somebody like you later in life discovered the Akashic Records and looked into this. Last week we had our, our friend and guest and abductee Terry Lovelace on and his newest book, he has all these people had emailed him about their own experiences. There was one in there uh, where the woman had had babies taken from her during abduction. And mm -hmm. she had a vision of being able to hold one of these as an, you know, uh, you know, uh, a fetus and she was told you well you chose this and we brought up on the show is how much do our past lives or what we are before we're born you know what role do aliens have in communicating with us and how we choose do we choose to be abductees i think we do and i think the re and and, and from my own experiences i think the reason that it feels so traumatic and has been conveyed in that way is because it is traumatic. Because look what we're talking about. We're talking about being solid, which we are. We're, third, we're in 3D, we're 3D bodies and we're solid. And what are our abductions? There are some that, I mean, I my, my memory is being yanked backwards through walls. And then I remember just sort of coming back in through the wall and then waking. And um, I have not done hypnotherapy um, because honestly, I was, I was a little nervous. I think part yeah. of why, why I did not do hypnotherapy when this was happening for me was because the depictions of all of this in media were so horrifying. I, yeah, it oh, was yeah. like, I didn't want to see like, you know, uh, creatures, I, the things that I've seen. No, because <clears throat> my life, I used to feel transformed after these experiences. I would feel yeah. kind of like hungover. And I would not, and you know, when I share some of my experiences with anyone that I can, I usually say, whatever happened, and I'll, I'll say, you know, by the way, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't doing drugs, whatever. And I woke up the next morning and I was like hung over for two, three days. I felt like my reality had shifted. But what's interesting is I always, things, hmm, it's really hard. It's very subtle. It always felt to me like on some level it was coming home which is why I sobbed when I first saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind in the theater. Yeah. It felt like home. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And then there was the movie. Um, oh, uh, and I met him at one of the contact uh, in the deserts. Um, um, uh, was, uh, um, <laughs> Fire in the Sky. Travis, oh, Travis, Wal Walton. Travis Walton. Yes. I was just thinking about that too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I remember that I was living in, I, I'm, I'm from New York city originally and I was in New York city and I was, I went to with my mother, actually my, one of my brothers and we went to the theater on Broadway to see fire in the sky. And I kind of wasn't thinking like I, I wasn't being heavy about it. And yeah. I remember that this, when he, when he has a recall and, and the needle is going down towards his eye um, mm. it's not that I like passed out in the theater or anything, but when I came out of that theater, I stumbled against a building walking back to my apartment. And when my brother and mother left, I was dizzy and I was sick to my stomach. Like I was just going to vomit yeah. really. I got like, that had such an effect on me. Um, and so I know I was tampered with, I do know this. Um, and I came to realize later that the reason that it felt so traumatic was because we're being trans imagine this we're going from third dimension and we're being moved through time and space to non-physical right to then reappear in another dimension somewhere somehow and we call them ships and we see beings or we don't so why would that not feel traumatic right, right. it makes sense it always made sense to me so my understanding and my experience on ETs in general are that there are thousands. <laughs> There's more, and actually the records have affirmed this with me, is that there is much, much more in multi-dimension and off planet than there are human beings and living things on this planet. And that there's a lot of warring going on in non-physical and, you know, and then, and then people want to know, like, I'll give you an example about, like, 
people talk about ships in mountains, right? Yeah. James Gilliland has that up at his ranch. You can actually see the lights going into the mountain there, Mount Adams. Yeah. Anyway, um, so if people get linear about it, they'll be like, but I don't understand. How can a ship be in the mountain? Well, <laughs> they're trans it's they're transmuting themselves into non physical. Transphasic, basically. Yeah, exactly. They phase themselves exactly. Out. Yeah. So it does make no. sense. Oh yeah. Right. And and where well, I live, actually, there's mountains around me. And this is this area that I live in is known to that there's supposed to be ships in the mountains. Um and so I get it. I I I understand that. And there have been C E fives done where I live here, um, which is the close encounter of the fifth kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that Stephen well, Greer is involved in. The, you see, I was talking, like I said, last week with Terry, because I've had my own experiences, of course. I've had all these weird experiences, and, and I just recently like came to terms with the fact that I've probably had some alien experiences on a mm -hmm. camping trip. Uh, and <laughs> other other experiences throughout my life right. that I just looked away from. I would not look at it. Like I all mm -hmm. interested in all these things paranormal, but I just write all those things off uh, until lately in my life. And I've looked back at them like, oh, oh, yeah. Like one of them was on this camping trip. I was I have a memory of being floated up out of the tent and looking down, having this bright light behind me. Mm -hmm. And then I was on a ship that had like all like panels, like sci-fi, total sci-fi. And yep. there's a being I can't see their face is telling me all this stuff. And like, I feel like I know everything. And like, and I had this feeling like they found me. It was the feeling I had in this. They found me. Oh, my God. And then I wake up with like trying to grasp what it was they were giving me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I will, you know, and I, I think people experience this a lot in dreams where they were very like felt like they connect with something in a dream and you're given this information. You have like this knowing. And then when you wake up, it's like, it's gone. Yes. It's like right. the brain can't yeah, translate it once it comes back to That's this, right. this realm, but it understands it in whatever realm they bring you mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. but the brain can't handle it in this 3D version or whatever we're living in. And don't you think that that information goes somewhere? in our yeah. cells or in like our I've consciousness got it somewhere yep absolutely i do too i do too mm -hmm. we do have somebody waiting on the phone line i like to get to always has really great questions we got zach on the line how you doing tonight zach i'm doing pretty good man how you doing doing good thanks for calling in okay so i just have two questions for tonight i'll keep them nice and short hey mary very nice to meet you hi so so my first question goes back to really the concept of an akashic record um because it's been fairly recent that the whole concept has been introduced to me and i'm still still trying to understand it so my question to you is when somebody is looking up their akashic records what form do they typically come in i mean do they typically come in the form of like a book or maybe like a file cabinet with different records or even a library um can you just give me maybe uh, like the definite example or maybe multiple examples of how someone has seen their Akashic records? Um, so if you can, okay, so we, we have access to our records. We all have access to our records. We can all access our records. Um, we can read about how people access them, which is how I got more clarity. And then I began to open the records myself and it was so easy that I knew I was accessing that aspect of myself. Um, <clears throat> so that's what you can do. I used Linda Howe's book because it came to me that way. And um, and then I got more clarity when I was reading about it. So one, one suggestion is to just read as much as you can about the Akashic Records. Um, Edgar Casey, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, all of you, is that Edgar Casey, during all those quadrains that he was writing in all his books, he was accessing the Akashic realm. I actually didn't know that. I have been reading his books for years and reading his, you know, downloads and his, um, when he did psychic readings. So when we, but when we are individually accessing our records, we're accessing the divine aspect of ourselves. So it's by the intention of it, by the knowing it, that it happens. It is literally that. And the reason I can do it is because when I first tapped in, when I first heard about it, it felt familiar to me. And the basis of it are two things that our souls choose our incarnations. And I have always believed that without being Buddhist or anything like that. And then, and the, the, and I should actually, that's number two. And number one for me is just really knowing that there is a greater source of that makes all of this work. And I've always believed that. If we don't believe that, then 
the cent the whole central part of the Akashic Records is that it's a divine realm. So it is connecting us back up and down and in and out of our of the greatest sense of ourselves, which is divine. My belief, and it's what they teach us. Um, so so you can ask so read what you can about it. Um, in in the history of the Akashic Records, by the way, they used to only be able to be accessed by mystics and holy people going back millions or well, thousands of years. And the reason we can access them more easily these days is because conscious, the planet has expanded. We know vibration is raising, even though it looks chaotic and everything, it's <laughs> going to look chao more chaotic because as our consciousness expands, the, there is, there's a saying that the veil is getting thinner. It is, we can access, I mean, we can access beyond third dimension much, much easier because we've expanded. And so that's why it's more accessible. So anyone can open their records. And when you do, I mean, like Linda, ha one book that, you know, is, is Linda Howe, it's called How to Read Your Akashic Records. So you can try that, just look, at, look that up, read it. And in that book, you begin opening your records and you'll resonate with it or you want, won't, it's that easy. Some people, I've had people come to me and I always say, go take the books and read them and go open your own records. And I've had people come back to me and say, I did. And I go, well, what happened? And they'll just say nothing. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> so that doesn't mean that they can't access it. It just means that they may be in a space in their lives. There could be a block from a past it's not life. not the time for them to know. Yeah. And, and you know, because what the records help us do is remove blocks in our lives so that we can live more fully what our souls chose to come to here to do. So I, I hope that answered your question a bit. Okay. No, I did answer my question. Uh, the second question that I did have mm -hmm. is what advice uh, can you be able to give me when I'm looking at my Akashic records? Because I, I, Jason knows very well about the reoccurring dream that I've had. And I did get clarity from another guest that was on the show that apparently I was in the mob in the 1920s. Hell of a guy. And either I, I really messed up on something, whether I was a snitch or whether some shipment of illegal booze got lost, whatever it might be, but it ended up with me getting shot in the back of the head and then setting up and set on fire to get more information on that. What is some advice that you can be able to give to me when looking up my Akashic records on that? So what we can do with events like that, when events, events come up, when we're in your records, when we're in somebody's records um, and an event comes forward like that then we look at the event and what will happen it 100 percent of the time we will there will be a link to first of all whatever it was that that person did is ne it's never bad it's that and they're not taking away from the physical experience that might have happened in the 20s when that happens to you what happens is though the akasha perspective shines a different light on it the light of who we are and we look at that situation. We look at what was what it was like leading into that situation. It's not just the event, in other words. And then we look at your life now, and and we and we and we discover the correlations in a positive way of that event with what you're here to do today. And that's the best way I can describe it. That is what happens. It it, it it's amazing because as we dialogue in. Like if I'm doing your records and as you and I are dialoguing back and forth after I've opened your records with your permission, the divine moves on the spoken word. Everything that's coming in, you'll be speaking about something like this event you just described and I will be hearing from the quantum field at the same time. Hard to describe. I'm hearing quantumly as you're speaking and then it's squeezing into my imagination and out my mouth or whatever and it, re and it will resonate. And so what we get to do is we get to sort of like a Rubik's cube take that event, that past life, or that experience, and literally look at it. And all of a sudden, the color starts changing, and it becomes of value to who you are. That's what happens. All right. Well, those are all the questions that I had. Thank you so much, Mary, for answering them. I greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Thank you, Zach. The, I know the audience has probably heard this story before, but uh, the first time Zach ever told about that past life, uh, was it kind of freaked me out because remember I told you I always wanted to be in the film. When I was in high school, I was part of a TV class and we'd make these short films for TV and I made this one called The Red Lighter. And it was like a very David Lynchy kind of film that mm -hmm. like the beginning is the end, the end is the beginning. And uh, in that, it starts out and ends also with a the, the scene of his that that death scene he describes of a guy being executed and then really the body set on fire, you know, totally gangster style, exactly like you just. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so wait a minute. So you know Zach? I, I didn't know him when I made that. That was in, I was like you know no, no, seventeen, know eighteen. Right, when but I you made know, that know him film. now. So then, obviously, as a caller you, in the show, you two, you two probably have, like maybe you were there. That's what we've speculated. I don't know, but it's weird. It's weird that when he first described it, I'm like, that's exactly the scene from the one movie I made. I bet you were there. So you were remembering it. <laughs> Maybe. I was say earlier, creative. when you were talking about past I, I don't want to be a made man, Jason. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Zach. You have a good night, bud. Have a good night, everybody. All right, Thanks. Rob, what were you saying? I was going to say when we were talking about past lives earlier and you were talking about, you know, your experiences, I was like, you don't forget you set Zach on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You know, Maybe. I, I was That's a director. Funny. I wasn't an actor in it. Okay. So yeah. I was like from the outside, but I imagined it all and wrote it all up. And it's just, just like that scene. So it's weird. It's weird. You know, Zach was one of the first callers I had into this show. So wow. when, we were, when we were talking about past lives and, and, stuff earlier like you were saying you know kids speaking all these crazy languages and stuff i mean me i'm a musician and i have to struggle to learn you know to play instruments and stuff and it always freaks me out when i see these little tiny kids that just pick up a guitar or Savants, yeah. piano and yeah. know how to play it yeah yep. little brat <laughs> yeah. Well, what, and, and you know what else you know how too? to play it well yeah. Right. And and also, Rob, what about the, the kids that come in and they'll describe a battle from yeah. World War II or something? Exactly. And then when the parents or the teachers or whoever, they go look it up in history and it was exactly as that child. And it could be really five year old saying, Mommy, I was blah, blah, blah. I remember killing you or whatever. Yeah. And it freaks the adults out. And then they go check it out and they find out that that child knew something about history that's amazing yeah, right. yeah. well mm -hmm. yeah we were just talking about all that last week and it's just mm -hmm. you know uh, i mean i have i'm a parent and i've had my kids say a few things i'm like hmm because yeah. we're, <laughs> like, we're very open about it now so we got another phone call when i get to here before we run out of time mm -hmm. we got some who we got on the line like, i don't see an area code yet oh it's a Ziriana. hey Ziriana. thanks for calling in hi how you doing tonight jason doing good except um, for technical difficulties but doing good <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I have a um, question with my comment for Mary. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've been to the uh, Akashic Record Library. I go there occasionally. And um, I, you know, and I, and I get lessons or whatever. But I store it. I write and I store it. So how do I, what should I do with it next? I mean, I know there's a lesson to it, but I, maybe, I, maybe I'm not phrasing it right. What, what do you do with all of it? You, you got all this yeah, knowledge you're that's what I was. That's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. well, well, I keep the, no I keep the knowledge from it. But I, like I said, I usually write it down or I just keep it. I don't really tell a lot of people. Oh, so here's a question for you. By the way, Ziriana, I love your name. That's a really beautiful name. just want to say that. Anyway, um, why? what is the reason that you are initially going to the records? Are you going just to see what's there? Or are you bringing issues or questions to the records? No, it seems it well. It's from a past life, and um, it seems as though on on uh, let's say holidays, rituals, ceremonies, that it was the time that you went to the Akashic records, and you went into this, and there was uh, I went and a and a few of the um, other people that were in my well, let's say group, okay. 
and um and we and and we would uh, go there and spend time there and um get our records and learn lessons and things like that but mm-hmm. like i said i store it you is, know is it all stuff you, about your own past lives mm-hmm. no it's it it it's not just that it's other things okay. that that have that have come to pass it's you know it's it you know that's very important i can't explain no, I do understand that, and that's what my first book is 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 about. Because what would ha- very interesting what would happen when I would open my own records about my own whatever a question about myself is then they would begin to talk about and speak about things about humanity that were just so profound, kind of like conversations with God. Um, and so, what I heard was you need to put these down and write these because humanity needs to hear these concepts kind of like abraham hicks i guess so i think it's important you have written them down right and you you when you receive information um my question to you is why do do you feel like share it why do you not share it well every time that i did try to um speak to people about it in the in in you know in certain fields you know i was well, you know, labeled crazy. How mm-hmm. did you get this? You know, you're not, you know, you're a nobody, in other words, you know. And and why would you get this information as opposed to somebody else, you know? Well, um, so, and, and, and everybody else has access to it. So why, why am I doing it? I can't answer that either. You know, I've never had anyone say I'm crazy. Not yet. Um, and if, and if they do that's okay. Then there are other people out there that may need to hear what you're receiving. And that's my suggestion to you. Um, and those that are going like, ew, or whatever, you're crazy. They're not in that vibration. It's just simply that they're just not in that vibration. That doesn't mean that you, that you shouldn't be sharing it. That's my sense. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I have enough for, for uh, I would say, a book. I've said mm-hmm. that for years, but um, they're just, um, uh, you know, I just keep them. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything like that, you know. Okay, well, here's another, here's another the- question, very important question. Do you feel comfortable just keeping them, or are you feeling like there's something more that you need to be doing with this? No, they they do need to go out. They, they, okay. I felt that for a few years. I just don't know how to go about that. It needs to be out. So then it's a book, right? Or maybe you said you have enough already. If you have these writings, then... Yeah. Okay, so my suggestion to you is go back into, uh, with the intention of taking this information and bringing it to the world revisit the records and and while you're visiting the records write like ask the records to help you manifest this into what will benefit humanity that's my suggestion to you okay yeah okay. because the world needs the planet really needs to be reminded of of the good stuff i'm just going to say that <laughs> we really need to remind each other of the good stuff. And the records are, are, are one way that we can do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, th- okay. Thank you, Azariana, for calling in. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. You have a good night. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So uh, there's a question from the chat room here, too. We got mm-hmm. Stacy says... Hi, Jason. Got a question for Mary. Has she ever encountered a connection between the astral realm and someone who had an Alice in Wonderland syndrome? I'm not sure what that is. I'm not quite sure what that is either. I mean, yeah. or what the meaning of that is in this question. Yeah. Um, astral realm. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland syndrome. I don't know. Is that going down the rabbit hole? Going down the rabbit hole, I guess. <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, what I mean, you, you know, you have people talk about the astral realm, and, and, and what's its relationship to the uh, to the Akashic record? 
Well, I've never actually compared the two, so I can't. I don't think I can even answer that. Yeah. So uh, let me. So let me ask you guys: What do you know the astral realm to be? Uh, my imagination of what it is and what I've you know read over the years is it's it's the almost like the forethought before this realm. Like things can be created in the astral realm first before they're created here. Like the pre-programming phase of this reality. I look at it that way. What if there's no time? Then it's all happening at the same time, right? Right. So then my answer would be yes. <laughs> <laughs> because where I am with those records, it's not a before or now or tomorrow. It's all in the now. All the dimensions are at the same time. I mean, we've been hearing that there are parallel universes, that what we're doing right now exists now and always will and always will and always will. So, you know, our brains can't wrap themselves around that idea. Well, we think in linear no sense, mm -hmm. you know, if you take us out of linear, you know, time, you know, yes. where the end is the beginning, the beginning is the end, and there's yes. no beginning, there's no end, the brain kind of, this 3D brain can't handle it. Mm-hmm. But there's so a part that, of us I think that does handle it. There's another aspect that can handle it. It's just they can't do it while we're here. We can't ask our mind to interpret it. Right. Can't translate it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Astral realm, I would say yes. The Alice in Wonderland, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I, yeah like I said, I don't know what the, the Alice in Wonderland reference is there to, <laughs> besides going down rabbit holes, which we've gone down plenty tonight. we got more to go down. Um <laughs> But yeah, I'm still uh, still interested too in the, the whole alien aspect. You know, um, you know, like we've talked about before, a lot of us believe that you know there's possibility that we've lived other as alien species and other realms, and you know, like you say, you could talk about different dimensions. I've always said some people really can't trace their, you know, they have these past life experiences. It could possibly your past life never happened in this linear time frame. That's, it could that's happen right. in a parallel past. A past or, that has or, nothing to do with our past. Yes, or a galactic coming from a galactic um, area, we'll say, not from in incarnating. Oh, here, here's her answer. Here you go. It's a rare oh. perception disorder I had from the age of two to 20. I was wide awake, shrunk down to carpet fiber size. My bones felt paper thin, no term for it back then. So you felt like you were small. Is that Interesting. What saying? Interesting. So, um, oh, you so know, it's interesting. Oh, uh, you know what? That's a great question. So I was in a reading with someone who's very like, um, and it was it was not on on computer. It was in the room we were together, in the same room. And what started to happen was what you just described there in that comment. Like, and and this woman moves through dimensions. She's extremely successful on this planet, very successful. And so um, so she's not just flying around, right? Yeah. So um, in the in the middle of her reading, the room, I like to call it, you know, uh, when your camera, if you push your camera in, but you widen out and it goes yeah. like this and we were getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I actually said it right there. We were in her records. I said, oh, man, I said. We're shrinking. And she goes, I know I'm I'm seeing it, too. And I went, oh, my God, holy moly, we're shrinking. And it was like that feeling that that that. Um, the person that just commented said, Stacy, yeah. Stacy, thank you. Getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I experienced it. So I think that when that happens, we're probably coming out of our bodies in some yeah. way. Right. And we're experiencing, we are in that moment, having the awareness of experiencing our non-physical self. That has to be what it is because I, it was trippy. And I, it was like I felt a little lightheaded, and it was cool. But it was like we just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Both of us. It was wild. Wow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, we had a couple weeks ago, I had uh, a guest on by the name of Mike Anthony. And uh, it's about near death, you know, about his experience with his father who passed and all that. But he was also in a series where they uh, – God, I can't think of the name of the, the series, what, what it was called. But it was all about death and near-death experience. There was a whole section about near-death experiences, and in that – uh, a number of the near-death experiences would talk about like sitting on the shoulder of somebody or being mm. really small and falling around the room. Well, ever, ever since my uh, 20s, I started seeing these like blue lights that would fly around and I'd see them fly into people's heads. Sometimes I'd see them flash and I'd see a face. Wow. 
And uh, and somebody told me once, oh, you're seeing spirit. That spirit that you're seeing, that's a rare gift. <clears throat> and it always made me wonder, is it like the true innate what we are, if we were to see our soul, it'd be this little blue spark <laughs> flying around. Yeah, is probably. What I would it'd be really small. You'd be really small. And that term, multidimensionals, that's another term for, I mean, there's ETs. There's multidimensionals, there's interdimensionals, there's so many terms now. It's probably all the same soup, as you said earlier. Yeah. I think we're all, we're coming now to realize that it's not one or the other, it's all of it. Um, and that, what is, there's another thing that's been said that we're, well, I'll use the word God, but I mean God in the like source sense, okay? But that yeah. we're in God's, we are part of God's cosmic play. We are in a play where that this is an illusion. We are the illusion. Earth well, so is I the said, illusion. We're like characters in a book. You know? Yes, yes, and it, that's it, trippy what, too. I yeah. like. I don't want to go to sleep thinking that. I mean, that can be trippy to be thinking about that because then it's like, well, then why be here? In yeah. this form, I mean. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it, it comes down to the perception. I remember I had a friend. I used to. Uh, you know, he was raised in a Christian household and all that, and I would blow his mind with my concepts, right? No, he was totally <laughs> skeptical of everything I would say. And he would get, we would argue about stuff, and he's like, I just don't believe in past lives, you know. You know, what does mm -hmm. it matter if you don't have your memories, then, then you're not you, you know. If, if you forget everything, what's the point? I said, well, if I knocked you over the head and you had amnesia, and we woke you up, and you didn't remember anything, who you were, or anything, would it be you? Are you just Good your question. memories? You know, if I took away all your memories, like, you know, people suffer amnesia, it's a real medical condition, can't remember who they are, don't have their memories, are they still them? Or are they a whole new person? And he's like, well, uh, I'm like, I mean, that's what past life is. You you know, there, it's still there. You, you live it's there. You had all those experiences, but the memories are gone. They've been blocked or wiped or they're still there, I think. But They're there. You know, I think there, we can access them. Yeah, yeah, there could be a block or or they don't have a role for us right now. It could be that too. We don't have use for it right now for what we're here to do. I believe be we all have. It could be distracting from yeah. our our chosen journey. I love that word journey. Um, you know, when you were speaking amnesia, you said something earlier, Jason, and it was about uh, something about the astronauts, right? When I was little, I wanted to be an astronaut and Me too. like crazy, and I watched everything. I watched the moon landing, all of that, and I remembered when they would come back. And the capsule used to like smash into the ocean. They would get them out on a ship and they would rush them into, you know, quarantine. Uh, what a, quarantine. Yeah. And I used to say to my mother, what, what is that? What is for debriefing? And I used to like wonder what that was. And then I had an experience once where I was watching one of the astronauts on television and I, I, saw, I saw something else. And I, what I heard in, an, in another way was that, they did see and experience a lot like more than we want to, more than we're being told. Let's just say that. And, um, and then they were put into a state of amnesia to forget it. See, I've wondered that they see that I've always talked about the Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong mm -hmm. interview at right after coming back from the moon, you know, the, the moon landing and all that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is the, the demeanor just does not seem right for guys. That's right. That, I mean, you just did the most history making thing in the world. I mean, like, and, and, and you're on, you know, everybody's watching you. I understand that they'd be nervous. I get that. It Everybody was, says, it Oh, they'd be nervous. A, a somber feeling. Yeah. Like they're sad. Them. We've and all then, seen the movie. Look into the flashy thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Is it a men in black going, all right, Neil. Take a look into this. But if you look at their lives afterwards, Neil uh, Neil Armstrong. I mean, there's rumors he had somewhat of a drinking problem. That, but he he was fascinated with ancient civilizations. Afterwards, yes, or Edgar you know? Mitchell. And well, yeah, Edgar Mitchell was Huge. a lot more open. We never heard. You know, Neil Armstrong wasn't as open uh, as no, Edgar that's Mitchell true. was. That's true. Uh, he was very, very kept things very close. But it seems some of his speeches, he was giving us a little bit of a hint, maybe if we're reading into it. I don't know. Right. But and I found it interesting in his his interest in all these in the ancient civilization. I mean, he would actually travel to places and and he had a fascination with it. Why? Why exactly? And and I have another theory. There was always that period of time where it. To, I don't know if they still have that. We're, we're at NASA or wherever they're leaving from. We're out of touch with them. There's that blackout. Yeah. And they call yeah, it that... the atmosphere. We're leaving. Da, da, da. And when I was a little kid, I was like, something's happening in that blackout period. 
whether they like saw God, saw something. Silence. Yeah, well, what is that? And I believe that they all experienced something very, very great and um, powerful and in that blackout period. And then when they came back, they had to be, either they were put into a, a state by whether it was ETs or something or multidimensionals or whatever, so they wouldn't come back and create chaos or something by saying what they saw or the government did it. Well, you know, one of the things I pointed out, you know, even if you watch the, the um, what's that movie, The Right Stuff, you know, mm -hmm. you, you watch all the stuff they put all the astronauts through psychologically, yep. Yep. all this stuff, like they were trying to find the perfect candidates Yes. that are like Manchurian candidates, people who can yes. be suggestible. If you look, read the book. I mean, like, there, I felt like they were, they were, you know, like, oh, well, is this just to make sure they're right psych psychologically for the trip? The mar but I felt like they were trying to find people that, like, yeah, we can control roll back their mind and control mm -hmm. them. Yeah, I think there's, so too. There's devastating it, consequences to somebody for doing that. I think you know. Well, I, for I, you I, mean for controlling someone? Not today. Yeah. We, everybody gets away with doing that like crazy. I know, but I, I, think, I think psychologically for Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins and Buzz Aldrin, it, you know, you know, how's that affected them throughout their life? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could see it. it. It it's it's what um what Jamie was saying. Like you could see like when you saw them in interviews after, something was weird, right? Different, yes. different, off. off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember uh, telling this to one of my coworkers, this young girl, you know, she's like 18. And she's like, what? You know, she was telling her, you know, I'm like, I'm the weird guy at work. Everybody knows. And I said, go watch that interview. Go watch the interview with them after they came uh, back from the moon landing. And so I, she goes on her break and I see her back there watching. She goes, she got really quiet. She goes, that is really odd mm -hmm. the way they acted. I'm like, see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, see? Like, even, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> blew your mind, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people who believe we never win. I believe we went there. I believe those men saw something incredible and Me either too. felt so loyal to their country they never talked about it, or like like we think maybe had their minds messed with a little bit. It could be. Back. I know. I always felt it was odd. There's something uh, suspicious about it all to me. And I've mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated with the moon. And uh, there's a classic, and I know I've talked about it on the show a billion times, but there's a classic. I was a big Art Bell fan, uh, radio host, mm -hmm. and. Um, he had uh, John Lear on his show. And there's a classic episode where John Lear starts talking about uh, alien ba that the moon is like an alien, uh, what did he call it? soul uh, oh, soul processor or something like that. Um, basically that the aliens have like a soul collector in the moon. And the, 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 the light at the end of the tunnel is really your trip to the moon where they, they take your soul and then they send you back here into a past life that aliens were on the other side. Like, do you go to the end of the light at the end of the tunnel? And something about that <laughs> really unnerved me when I first heard that years ago. And I actually asked John Lear and he was on a radio program and I called him. He's like, oh yeah, it was something me and Whitley were talking about the night before that show. And that's why wow. I went off kind of about that idea. And I'm like, that is a scary idea. <laughs> it is a scary idea. Well, there's also the theory that the planet began from the Anunnaki. Right. Sumerians. Yeah. And, and, and the thing. Anunnaki's um, their planet was in danger and they needed gold. And so the they Zachary came. The Zachary Stitchin line of thought. And, and they research. came and they, yeah. yeah, and they themselves could not mine the gold because of our atmosphere being different to theirs, whatever. So they made slave uh, hybrids, a hybrid slave race. And what I find fascinating about that theory is that there is, if you look throughout the history, including right now on this planet, there, there's, oh, there, there is this need that I noticed, the behavioral thing of people always wanting to look up to something, whether it's a priest, whether it's a guru, whether it's a, a president. To every religion and every culture, every nowhere this looking up to, it looking world. up to, looking up to, um, which thank God I didn't have that. I don't have that gene. Thank you, thank you, whoever. <laughs> um, but th if you look at it, it's and that need to collect together around a shared belief, and then the belief becomes the thing we're going to look up to. So it's it's almost like in our it kind of makes that theory of the Anunnaki make sense. Yeah, because that's me. how we were created. You mm -hmm. know, possibly. Yeah, you know, yeah. The other, you know, what I've always said too. You know, I, I'm a Star Wars, Star Trek, sci-fi fan. Mm -hmm. You know, in Star Trek, you see them land on planets. They get yeah. on the, you know, they where they 
beam them down. They beam them and, down. And they're breathing the air and everything's fine. <laughs> Unlike like War of the Worlds where we defeat the aliens because they get some minor little bug and kills them, you know? But that's right. more like it, I think. You know, mm -hmm. if you were to like go travel, interstellar travel, I mean, and, and you want to populate a new planet, you almost have to create a whole new body to live on that planet to deal with the, the, the thing, you know, yeah. the, living there. Who's to say that's what we are? You know, some ancient civilization that came here. You know, that right, they, their civilization ended and they needed to create a new one, but they couldn't be here. Their physical bodies could not be here. Exactly. They were not meant for this planet, but they could yep. grow a new body and maybe find a way to put their souls into it. Which is yeah. what hybrids are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what the hybrid program is about right now. Another alien race coming in. Hey, we want in too. And we need to make an, uh, the right body that we can put our souls into it. I just uh, wrote over the last six years, but it's complete and it's being pitched. A teen sci-fi series scripted and it's the main character is an alien hybrid with amazing powers and it's not powers that superheroes that we've had in the past i always look for different ways to do things but yeah. um it's uh an interesting idea and it'll be interesting to see if the studios resonate with it i'll just say that but she finds yeah. out she's an alien hybrid um but and you then, can really be a touching upon a facet of society of a lot of people out there that feel this way or have this these experiences you could really be touching upon something well i think i think once the series is seen it's out there yes there are there are these forces around us in the form of companies big companies the studios and you know i sometimes wonder who's at the head and who's running them we were just talking about this i just say that too. i just say that um, because um, look at what's coming out of our screens. It's I think we can do better. Well, and, I think they like cancel the stuff that might be hitting too close to home sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, I mean, think we so were talking too. about this last week. Last week, uh, People of Earth. I love that show. You know, it was a comedy about alien abduction, but it was really interesting. Some of the facets they got into with like these abductees and what they happen with, with their children and there's reptilians and there, it, it was a comedy, but I, and it had a, I, I thought it had a pretty good fan base, but then they canceled it. I didn't, like what v. network was that on? I didn't see that. TBS, I think it was, I think it was on oh, TBS. Interesting. So it was scripted. So it was, fiction. yeah, it was a comedy. I mean, it was a com It was like a half hour, you know, comedy oh, about this alien abduction therapy group. Uh, but they're really being abducted, you know, <laughs> like, you know, that's the kind of the joke of it. You know, they're going through all this. Everybody right. thinks they're crazy. But and then you see the alien's perspective, like from the well, alien's the, perspective, taken them. Right. And the, and mine's a drama because um, I actually have been very upset about teens and they're lost. I just feel they're still lost. And the education Nowadays systems. Nowadays teens? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, you know, education system is not helping. It's a, they're just so many of the systems not helping. So I, it upset me over the years. And I was like, okay, what do I know how to do storytell? But after working in the records, it informed a, a, a newer way for me to blend what I knew, which was about abductions from my own experiences. And what I know needs to, like kids need to be heard, right? So in every episode of this show, it's called Kingdom of Me. But in each episode, the C storyline is actually based on a real story that happened in the life of a teen, like a national story. I dug in and found tough yeah. stories, suicide, transgender, whatever. And no one's done that model yet. And, and then on the and then on the surface, on the on the front burner, it's a sci-fi about an alien hybrid, which I thought would be fun for kids. And everything I'm writing, this is what you were saying, Jason, it's actually true, but it's disguised as, oh, it's a science fiction, right? <laughs> But I think that's a lot of what we're given information wise is through. That's why I love science fiction. <laughs> that's why, because right. I, I feel like we're getting little nibbits of secrets. Yeah, we do. You know, I have it. AI in there. I have uh, I have military bases off of Malibu, which I know there are under the ocean. They're in there. I, I brought all the stuff that I know. I have all the books on it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'll just bring this right into a fictional thing and, and we'll have fun with it. And it's truth. <laughs> that's awesome. Jamie, what were you going to say? Mm hmm. That Jamie was gonna. What were you saying, Jamie? I kind of forgot part of it, but I think that's huh. really important to put things out like that because there is so much other people trying to shut it down or tell you something different, and people are being bred right now almost like sheep. And yep. I agree with what you're saying about the education system. My background is in early childhood development, 
Mm. So I feel really strongly about that. But but planning that, putting that out there, it's going to resonate with people. It's going to make them think and go on their own experiences and right. make their own judgments that way. So if people are telling them this or that, they're going to have that kind of to counter it. Like a permission, you well, you know what in for, what helped me in the writing of this was I watched. I, well, first of all, I went and read and looked at everything that teens were vibing. What were they watching? What were they write books, teen books? And I read Thirteen Reasons Why, and um, and then it became the series. So I read the book first, and when I saw the series, they got in a lot of trouble. That I thought Netflix was going to take it down. Mm. Parents were upset. Schools were upset. Well, I watched all the seasons. Yeah. And what here's my favorite, here's why I think it worked. Because in that story, it's what Jamie's sort of leading to here is, uh, and it was fictional, right? Yeah. Um, those kids, they solved their own issues on their own. All the way at the very end, that last season, they just take it all into their own hands as a group that loves and cares about each other. And they figure it all out. They didn't wait for the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the counselor, the parents. They just did it on their own. And it was very empowering. And if I were a young person, I would feel great because that's how kids are going to solve things. They're banding together um, and they're because they're, the systems are failing them. So if I were a kid right now, I'd never go to a counselor. I would never go to <laughs> a, a teacher for help. I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel comfortable. Where do they go? They go to each other, right? So why don't we empower that? Let's empower that in a healthy way. No, that's totally true. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, you talk about the you know the systems failing and all that. I, you know, I, I I'm one of those people like I you when, you, when it comes to politics, I hate both sides. I I, I mm -hmm. feel like right now everything that's happening, we're being the worst of all of it is that we're all being led to divide ourselves. Yes. And people fall into I'm part of this narrative and I'm part of this narrative and I don't believe what you believe and you don't believe what I believe and screw you. You know, like mm -hmm. who who the I want to say, who the beep are you? I don't. That's why I say to myself, if I think I know it's about something, I'm like, who the heck am I, anyways? Yeah, I, what yeah, do yeah. I know? You know, that's the thing. Just let it, let it go. We're in the end. We're all human. Yep. We're all in this together. We're all the same. And not, we're all the same. We're all going to end up in the same place. <laughs> so get over your crap. Stop. Yeah, you know, we. It's all futile. It's all completely futile, and we're mm -hmm. being distracted by the worst and divided by the worst. And that's what. If there are forces that be that are evil, want because they don't want us coming together. They don't want us putting the pieces together. No. And that'll that, never happen while we're arguing and yelling at each other about the stupidest stuff. Well, that's yeah, it's, all it's distractions. It's distraction. Yeah. It's probably by design. I think it's the design yes. of the ego, the collective ego, conscious. Versus an, indiv an actual individuals, although we have individuals, and if I named one of them right now, we'll definitely get taken off. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know, you, I you know, I got into like you know the whole Gnostic, not uh, Gnostic, mm -hmm. Gnostic text. You yeah. know, back you know the you know really got into these arch archons and these conscious thoughts of creation. You could call them mm -hmm. uh, that. There is some kind of like conscious ego of of humanity. Mm -hmm. It's not a you know that that that's a part of us. You could call it Satan. You could call it whatever you want, but it, mm -hmm. it it has an ego. It has an agenda, and it's not good. You could call it evil, the devil, or whatever it is. But it's it's all a part of us. That's the truth of it. It's all from us. It's it, when we step away from who we are. Yeah, that's what we it is. Lost, we get lost in the the, the crap of the story, the get, subplots yes. that don't mean yes. a damn thing. Right. I mean, it really is that I want to say it's that simple because actually when you look at it that way, it is simple. You know, uh, I'll go back to Abraham Hicks. They say, you know, if you're having a thought that doesn't feel good, then just think of something else. They actually joke and say, go pet your cat. <laughs> if you're if you you know, when you're having that, what what can we do if we if we if we engage in the dialogue of the what you're talking about, Jason, the crap and the dividing and all of that, as soon as we join in that, even if it's a join in it in resisting and playing the other side, we're igniting it and we're inviting more of it. It the best thing is to just walk away. I like the South, you know, Southern reaction. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> you know, like you're just, just walk away. Bless your heart. You know. Sometimes people Wish have a hard well. time with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Wish them when well. When they're when they're know? mad. Yeah. 
<laughs> but that's the thing. You, you know, there's a point where it's just like, when are we going to let go of all this crap, all the judgment, all the offense? We're all offended by something now. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. in. I'm just as guilty as others. I get pissed off at stuff I see. I've branded enough on my own on Facebook and social media about certain issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, but generally, I hate both sides, and I basically feel we are all being played. You know, especially when there's like, you know, they're talking about UFOs and stuff on the news and nobody gives a crap because we're too caught up in all this other stupid crap. I'm like, come on, UFOs, people. Some government admittance. But we're, we care more about, well, don't you, you know, find it? Is it kind of odd that it's so important that we need permission from the government to say right, we don't. That, some, that something's been around? I, I just laugh. It just makes me laugh because it's like yes, somebody exactly. said to me recently, oh, disclosure. And I went, I giggle about it. I'm like, oh, okay. So does that mean that um, now I feel better about everything that happened to me in the 80s and 90s, dragging through walls and whatever? Oh, was the happening. government admitted now. Now I'm supposed so to I'm feel good. better. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, I get it all now. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just like, welcome to the party. <laughs> we've been here. <laughs> welcome to the party. We've been That's waiting for you. <laughs> yep, that, and that's what I'm saying. Paranormal suit. We've been here, people. Come on. And there's other people who've been doing this longer than I have. You know, we've all been here waiting. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. we're like this segment of society that, or we we believe, we have some belief, and <laughs> I'm just waiting for the rest of the world to wake up. And when they do, you know, they can come to my show. I'm gonna get better, you know, better viewership. I don't know. <laughs> we got to go to commercial break. Uh, okay. The phone lines are still open, guys. We'll take your calls when we come back from the short commercial break. Transmission? Out here? SOS. Human. Unknown. Alien. Certificate X. Exclusive engagement at the Odeon Leicester Square. Now. Any systematized transmission indicating a possible intelligent origin must be invested. In space, no one can hear you scream. Necromancer Live Show in the Supernatural Symposium live on Facebook, YouTube, and InterfaceDeath.net. This is an APAC Studio presentation. Hi, I'm Barry, owner operator of Barry's Barometer Bart. Lately, I bet you've been lying awake at night asking yourself, how many barometers do I really need? Well, at Barry's Barometer Barn, we think you need more than one. Otherwise, we're going to go out of business. Remember, at Barry's Barometer Barn, we don't know the meaning of high-pressure sales. Come on, folks, buy another barometer. I'm trying to put my kids through college, I've got a family to support, and a secret mistress who isn't cheap. Visit Barry's Barometer Barn, 000 Storm Drive. Come on, folks, buy a barometer. I'm Barry's older brother, Larry. And every time one of you people walk past the store without coming in, Barry beats me. (laughs) This has been a presentation from Tim Morgan's APAC Studio. For more almost professional amateur comic studio content, visit the APAC YouTube channel. Search APAC 2002. That's APAC 2002 on YouTube. When Alex Gardner is asleep, he has an extraordinary gift. The government wants it. The scientists want it. But to keep it may cost him his life. It might be better if Alex didn't sleep at all. But he cannot resist entering the dreamscape. Can you? 
must see Dreamscape in the West End and all over London now. Certificate 15. It takes an extraordinary adventurer to enter the Dreamscape. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Join us every Wednesday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time for Weird Wednesday at the live stream with your host, Jamie, the Living Dead Girl, and Rob, the Phantom, where we'll talk about all things paranormal, including Zodiac, Astrology, Tarot card and Oracle card readings, live ghost boxing and spirit communication, where we'll do Voices from Beyond, the Gold Case Files. So we hope you join us live on Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday night at midnight Eastern Standard Time. We hope to see you there. Bye-bye. is alive. Join us and take a walk on the weird side when you tune in to the Kingdom of Nye, hosted by Heather Wade, the finest in late night talk. Listen live free weeknights starting at 9 p.m. Pacific time at thekingdomofnigh.com, talkstreamlive.com, and the Paranormal Radio app. Want to take a ride? Since 1948, Fate Magazine has brought you reports of the strange and unknown, all of them true. Fate Radio is carrying on that tradition, bringing you the unusual, macabre, strange, and bizarre. Join host Cat Hops Sunday nights from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. Heat them up. Do Ray. He You're listening to Paranormal Soup, bringing you the weird every Sunday night. Call into the show and join the discussion. The call-in lines are 219-230-4444 or 260-225-9419 or by Skype caller ID 00 jbland oo or jbland Paranormal Soup. And now to your host, Jason Bland. Tonight's guest is Mary Medeiros. She's got an upcoming book called In the Akashic Realm, Conversations with the Divine. Her website is spirittherapybymary.com. That's spirittherapybymary.com. If you're interested in a reading, go to her website. Well, I'm going to get, when we come back here in a second, I'll get more information about what you need to do to get a reading. Um, but your phone lines are open. Don't get a reading on a phone call, but uh, we will answer your questions. But I got one really good question I saw here in the chat room from Royal I want to get to as well. Uh, so we got a lot to get to this last half hour because this show goes by so fast let's go ahead and get right back to our guest all right now i want to get to this uh question that royal had here in the chat room i saw it earlier and i tried to hold on to it and he says jason can you ask mary if it's possible to change your record in this lifetime or is it just written or we just live it out oh great question yeah i thought it was too great question um everything okay so it's a living breathing essence of who we are our souls before we incarnate make a choice but we're not it's not a choice that's written down a b c d and that's it new no. because 
at the center of everything is choice always. So what will happen is if a couple of things will happen. So if you just put it up again. Okay, great. So um, it's not some predetermined thing. So our right. souls might say, not literally say, but choose like, okay, I'm coming into this lifetime because I'm going to participate in a grand design of love, of universal love. Let's just say that that's it. Because it is, it's those kinds of big um, journeys. They're like that, right? Yeah. And then as we're going through our lives, we are creating and feeding into that Akashic realm because it's recording. It, it basically records everything that every soul has ever thought, said, and done over the course of its existence. So we're always a living, breathing essence. We're quantum. The Akashic records are quantum. And what they're doing is they're holding the energy of what our souls in a grand level have chosen. That's all. Now we can say, oh, so can we come in and go, I don't care about love of the planet. I'm not doing it. Probably what would happen, my guess from studying this is we might not be very comfortable in this lifetime because our souls actually chose a design of, of, of universal love as an example. So if all of a sudden we just sort of go against that or choose something that is really not of universal love, um, it, it would not be in line with what we already chose. That's not to say that you can't live your life not having that. What may happen is it will be etched in the Akashic Records. You'll leave this planet, or this lifetime rather, and then come back, and that's probably still there. So we would do it in another lifetime. That's, like if you don't work it out this lifetime, well then, buddy, you got to do it the next. Yeah, time. but does it mean you're going to like go to hell and all of that and no... And, and there's always a choice. We have choices all the time. We can say, we could learn. Wait, here's the thing, too. It's not like when we open our records, the records go, oh, you're supposed to be this. Right. Like that. It's not like that at all. What happens is we, we, we tap into the essence of ourselves that feels great all the time. And then what is that called? It's called our soul's journey. It's actually a good, fun thing. And it feels great and it's expansive and we can change how we maneuver through that. We absolutely can. There's always choice. There's always opportunity. Um, and it's a divine realm, but it's always recording apparently in, in, in all of our thoughts and actions from every lifetime. You know, we've, I've, I've talked about the, the idea of predestination on this show. We had a guest on that was a psychic that, that was every, he, from his experience, everything was predestined. And I, I disagreed, mm. you know, I, for me, I'm, I, I like the Yoda. I always say that I like the, the line from empire strikes back with Yoda says the future is always emotion or uh, emotion. The future always is, or how he says it in reverse of things, but, right. the, but that's what my, you know, but you know, I've had experiences where I've dreamt things that came exactly the way I dreamt it. Mm -hmm. but I've also had a couple of experiences where I felt like I changed things, mm -hmm. you know, so because we it can. can't be predetermined. That's right. And you know that you know the predetermined idea. It feels like it's rooted in religions. Um, you know, if why would why would we be coming to this experience if it's all already written out and that's it? Like that's it's so not what life even feels like. Every, like when and, and, it's like it's well, when I was a kid, you know, I, they had these books. Choose your own adventure. I love those books. Oh, yeah. You know? Yes. You know, go to page 96 <laughs> if you choose to do this. But that's what I feel like, you know, when I say like, oh, we get, you know, we're living out these characters of books. I really feel like we are, but we're the, we're in the choose your own adventure mm -hmm. style of books. Mm -hmm. Yes. And according to the records, we're choosing our own adventure that is in line with, we'll just say gently in line with what our souls ch have chosen to come in to experience in this lifetime. Maybe we could say it that way. And so there's like so many choices that we have. We can we can do whatever we want. Actually, there's free choice, and there's and in divine, we are free divine beings as well. So, but I like this idea that once I heard that our souls actually choose on some deep or expansive or quantum level, an experience that we're here to participate in this soup. I love the name of this show in this soup 
we have chosen to do that. And maybe that's the only thing that's etched in stone is that we've chosen to be here. We don't come flopping out of the clouds by accident. That's not what I understand. We actually choose to be here. And so a lot of people have a hard time about that because um, it's pretty tough to be in third dimension. <laughs> and my, my thing is, is if, uh, you know, if everything's predestined, then just what does it matter what you do, you know, and what, nothing right. would matter. Everything would be, might as well be a nihilist, you know, like nothing, nothing would matter. Right. Nothing That's would right. matter. You That's know, right. if there's no choice, no free will, you know, as mm -hmm. you only had one psychic on here, nothing against him that had that perception that, you know, the future was totally set. I'm like, well, then mm -hmm. nothing would matter. Nothing would matter at all. Uh, you know, but I've had my experiences where I have seen the future as played out like in a dream. I've, I've dreamed something and it'll exactly come true. Uh, but like I said, I've had the experience where I could change it. And I, I, I feel like, you know, the idea of the multiverse and parallel universes and there's mm -hmm. infinite m amounts of different versions of us that, you know, we get glimpses of other versions of our lives and other universes. That's they're, what I all, think we're was connected to it. Yep. That's what I think might have been happening for you. That or that you're actually that you were tapping into a stream because there's no time that's mm -hmm. already in existence and we're calling yeah. it future. I mean, but yeah. it was the now somehow. When you, when you get into the whole, you know, afterlife alien perspective, mm -hmm. you know, of what, you know, cause people always think about, you know, when we bring the alien aspect into this, like, Oh geez. <laughs> Aliens, if they are technologically way more advanced than us, well, that's not the only thing they're going to be more advanced than us on. They're going to be more advanced than us on knowing what the afterlife is, if there's reincarnation, how it works, or maybe even controlling where our souls go, or, you know, I'm saying putting souls in bodies. They could have a whole technological understanding of what the afterlife is and our souls. You know, if we progress with technology, we're going to progress, hopefully, in other areas. And, and, Yes. The idea, uh, what I, I, why I, like I said, I just, I can't be just in the paranormal, believe in ghosts. I believe there's aliens. I believe there's, they're connected. There's this mm -hmm. whole universal paranormal theory, like, the, like the universal theory of everything, but it would be paranormal, like connects all these aspects, mm -hmm. the Kashuk records and aliens mm -hmm. and Bigfoot and ghosts and the whole deal. Um, there recently, we were talking about this, uh, there's, um, Israeli, uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, he was um, part, head of the Israeli space program. Came out, and and he had this statement that said basically, you know, that there's a galactic federation. The U.S. government knows about it. Israeli's government knows about it. And the, one of the reasons that we, we can't tell people is they won't understand what if we told them what really what spaceships really were. And I thought that was really weird. It's something along mm. the lines of what spaceships were. I'm like, what would, what would matter what their spaceships were? Maybe it's because they're not what we consider physical metal things. You know, we talk about people seeing orbs of light, and I've seen weird things like that. A, a spaceship could be that orb of light you see, you know? I mean, interdimensional it, travel. It probably, it most likely is, right? And and when you're, um, when you're talking about advanced technology, I resonate with the Arcturians. And once Sam, I we talked about that on here before. Yeah, too. once I found or they found me or I was connected um, through literature, I was just reading. I would just I poured through books, and really there was no time. I just was like, I know this, I know this, I know this, and they are warriors of love, and they are apparently um, protecting us on a very grand scale off planet. With you know, they're the ones that can. They're the ones actually that can um, knock the grays out. <laughs> well, that's um, what I'm saying. We don't know mm -hmm. what's going on behind the scenes. You know, no, we don't. At, at what war there is or you know, right. what our part is in it. Uh, right. I, I've always wondered if we were, you know, we're quarantined on this planet because we're part of some ancient wars treaty, you know, like, you know, some Who souls knows? are souls of Ecturians, some souls are souls of reptilians. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're all made, you know, some ancient war happened between aliens and said, all right, we're going to put all your, all the, victims of this war and on a planet together you got to be reborn and learn to get along mm -hmm. and you all have a piece in it all these aliens you, you better protect this planet or something along those lines I mean, i've came up with these fictional ideas way back in the day and then i read stuff about like uh you know what you know people have channeled about the aliens and stuff I'm like that's really like what i thought of, of a fictional story you know that's how you that wonder ha that happened to me a lot and um yeah. like for example i found out this is a good example in in the 
in that uh, when I was having those experiences, apparently the grays were the troublemakers during the 80s and the 90s. And then I noticed that my experiences just stopped. And then it was years later that I found out that there's this galactic federation off planet yeah. of many <clears throat> ET civilizations. And um, they the, the greys were ousted from our planet. They So I'm certain that it that my experiences were You're probably- You're not the only guest that said that. Well, oh, really interesting. Yeah, I've had other guests make this reference of that that they were kicked out or whatever. They were kicked they're out, here. right? They I were... think they're still here. I think they're still sneaking their way in here. Well, they <laughs> well actually they yes they are back, um, I think. And um, part of the reason too, this is another theory of information that I've received, not through the records but from other sources. Yeah. That <clears throat> the reason that now eat more ET. Um, cultures or whatever can are here and present is because we've been threatening to to blow up our planet basically right it's through nuclear and it's nuclear and so that will upset the cosmos and everything that lives in the cosmos whether it's physical or not and so now they can intervene because we could destroy them so right now they're not just the grays but there's there's intervention what I'm hearing is from angelic realms, from from the angels, from the archangelic realms, from the ETs, the benevolent ETs, the benevolent ETs. There's, I just received this message again today. There's so much help we're getting. We think we're figuring it out. We're getting help up the wazoo like crazy. And I love oh, hearing that. But I've always felt, you know, I mean, we've talked about this show on the show plenty of times, you know, the whole... UFO wave really did start after, you know, Hiroshima and after the nuclear tests. And then you see all the interest of aliens in our nuclear technology, shutting down weapons. Yes. Is it like we, we violated some treaty? We violated something. When A we galactic did... treaty. Yeah. And then yes. it's like, oh, now the bad guys can come in yep. because we screwed up. And now that gives them a, a, a wedge in, like uh, to manipulate well, us or... I don't and know what, what I'm and what I'm hearing is it's more so now the good guys are coming here more in the form of hybrids as well, especially with youth, and and so there's a lot of light work happening. It's not it's not just holy light work. There's that too, yeah. but there's light work. Oh, Mary Magdalene is popping in all over the place to tell the real story of what happened with her and Jesus. So, I mean, this is happening too. And James Gilliland, he had that experience. He gets those experiences up on his ranch where the ascended masters are coming in during meditation groups and people are seeing them and they're being photographed um, oh, wow. in the image of Virgin Mary, in the image of Mary Magdalene or Jesus. And, you know, and of the, as being certainly. And then of course the Christ consciousness and all of that. So there's so much happening right now. Um, it's good. I don't think it's bad. I think it's good. And only light wins. Oh, here's an, uh, another thing that I remember that Abraham Hicks says. I love Abraham Hicks. But they say that um, when you walk in the room, there's no dark switch. There's only a light switch. I love yeah. that. There's only that light. That says there's only light. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, but that maybe, you know, if you believe mass consciousness affects reality, Mm -hmm. And boy, the yeah. mainstream media is doing a real disservice to to reality because they, yep. they're, they're like a parasite yeah, and they feed off that. our anxieties and fears. And that's all they're going to feed us because that's what they want. They want your reaction and your fear, your outrage. And then they just keep giving it, keep giving it, give it, give it. To give keep it, them it. in existence. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Even though the ratings are going down for a lot of these places. <laughs> Because I, I think people so. are getting tired. I think they are. If you see a lot of the ratings for a lot of these news networks are going way down because people it, are tired of it. it Why would you want to turn on negativity all the time? I it's don't. All I canceled my cable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I stopped watching news. And I and it's funny because my career began at CBS News in New York. I used to work in news. And, yeah, you and, know all about it. Yeah. And I, I was getting – I remember feeling like my soul was suffering. Something was just – I was get, becoming depleted in some weird way. And um, now I have a better vision of that now. I didn't when I was in it. Because when you're in that negative flow, it's really hard to see the light. If you're well, really immersed in it, it's tough. It, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you know, these, you, you see some of these people, you know, and celebrities and, and news anchors. And mm -hmm. the way things, I, to me, you know, 
the news itself is not the news when you worked there. Nope. It's, it's completely different now. I mean, completely it, it, different. And it's orchestrated narrative, and we want this to fit our narrative. We'll make this story fit our narrative. And then it's just both sides. This is not, you know, Fox News, MSN. I don't care. They're all doing it. They're all trying to get a reaction out of you. So here's what I know why it does happen the way it does, because I've worked there. I was on the yeah. inside for years. Their bread and butter, in a major way, what are the ads that are on around all the news at night? They're all pharmaceutical ads. Yeah, pharmaceutical ads. Now oh, we're yeah, going to get taken off because of what I'm saying. But I'm not holding back on this. No. They don't. make so much money. I used to, I was, one of my first jobs was buying, uh, being involved in a brokerage firm in New York, buying and selling spot time on television with all the major Johnson & Johnson, all the big advertisers. So I knew how much those spots cost. And now, prime time, I mean, when news is on, those ads... <laughs> They're paying millions and millions of dollars to the networks. That's how they're making money. And, and so what I find so interesting is how there could be a particular pharmaceutical um, or, or drug, a particular drug, and, and we all let, by the way, people are so The side numb. effects. Yeah, and people are so <laughs> numbed about it that it becomes like comedy routines to say it. Yes, it is. But then what about those vulnerable people that are sitting at home, and they might be elders too, and they're watching – and they're scared because maybe they had a diagnosis and they see that and they're like, oh, my God. And they tell their doctor, I want that drug. So who's protecting them, right? While right. the networks are making money off of those drugs that are having harmful effects on people, who's helping those vulnerable people? That makes me crazy, okay? Um, that's as crazy as the racism with, <laughs> with me, too. So um, that's all the networks care about. That's their bread and butter. So are they going to speak against a pharmaceutical company? Never. You will never find it, no matter which network you put on. Never. Never. I mean, what better what better way to advertise your antidepressants by putting it right after the news nowadays? <laughs> That's probably that, by design, too. Yep. Yeah, right, right? I mean, yep. I, I, my, my wife has to take medication. I'm not against people taking medication. It can no. help. You know, there's right. definitely ways that medications can help. Well, it's uh, like but daytime, we're so though. over. Oh, well, go ahead, mm -hmm. Jamie. Daytime, how they play all the different laundry detergents, you know, for the stay at home moms. And yep. Oh, advertising is totally, you know, central you know, around, night, you know, getting it to your market. Medications, you need to fall well, asleep fast. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and so here's what the record, I've opened my records to ask, and it will be in the book about um, health and wellness, let's just say that. And, every, and ancient wisdom shows us this, that everything that we need for health and wellness and healing, everything exists in Gaia and Gaia on the planet. And what I've been told is that, and shown is that there are plants and I'm being guided to mushrooms more. I mean, hearing about it, there are plants that we haven't even discovered. So there is a solution to every known, what we call disease on the planet. That it's is not given to us. It's all there. And we're being brainwashed away from that by man-made manipulated Oh, yeah. things things yeah, to put synthetic. in our body yeah yep. genetics gene body. therapy you know one of my favorite movies that uh, touched therapy. upon that was uh sean connery my big time favorite actors got you know rest I in peace sean. uh yeah. was uh medicine man Did oh, you ever yeah. see that yes Remember he's out in the jungle trying to find the you know they're destroying the rainforest and there's the cure for cancer <laughs> you know That's and right. they destroy it right you know? There's right. been a yeah. lot with the mushrooms lately, too. A lot right? of findings with different mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Psilocybin is popping up. And and the, what I find is interesting is it it's, and the records show this, because there's a quantum energy to plant life. It has divinity in it. <laughs> so if our cells are off from pollution or whatever the things that we're all struggling with, depression, whatever it is, all we need to do is f resonate with and go to and ingest the quantum energy of a particular plant. And that's where shamanism is on the, on the rise again. Um, the plant medicine is, is getting bigger cannabis, of course. And so um, what, where did it, is it new? No. Ancient wisdom, the indigenous know this already. They always knew it. And, and so it's nothing new. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our bodies crave things. We don't think about it, but we'll have a specific craving for something. And then you look it up like, why am I craving this so much? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this, you know, 
cures anxiety or helps mm -hmm. with this or that. So yep. your body will tell you what you need. It does. Yes. Yes. So, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. where, I, 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 I'm a big advocate for CBD. You talk about marijuana. For yeah, people me too. It changed my life uh, majorly. Helped me mm -hmm. out majorly. You know, and it's like, where you been all my life? Oh, yeah. The government suppressed you. That's why. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. CBD is huge. Um, but they don't make the, it. It's not. They don't make it very easy on the dispensaries because nope. of the taxing and everything. It's still difficult for them. Um, so, you know, people are going back to just growing it on their own. I don't blame them. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. heck, do you, if it goes totally corporized, do you really want it from them? <laughs> you know, like I'm saying, nope. yeah, yeah, I'd rather have it out of my own backyard, you know, but, and they want to make synthetic, you know, the pharmaceutical companies want to totally patent THC. They want to make a synthetic yes. version, get rid of all the natural stuff and have a synthetic version patented by them that you have to take. You can't get the, the don't grow it in your backyard. No, you're going to take our synthetic chemically made version of it. That's right. Well, I think they patented the seeds, mm -hmm. a lot of the oh, cannabis yeah. seeds, and that scares me. They, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. No. And in my opinion, it's a seed. It's from the earth. You can't patent that. All well, here's what I call, I refer to the things we're talking about where, you know, the pharmaceutical, some of the drugs that are, again, of course, there's drugs that help. But the ones that are really harmful, right? That's a crime against humanity. It is. And no one's calling it that. It's a crime it's against science. humanity. It's science. You don't believe in science. It's science. Yeah, so, science experiments. So, and you're the guinea pig. Enjoy. Exactly. So what is your theory? I want to hear like from, from all of you. What is your theory on this? How come you could take data, like tons of data, and just put it in front of people that show, let's take any drug, a particular drug. Oh, I'll take one that ruined my mother, and then eventually she died, Zoloft. Okay, so uh, we didn't know she was on it. Her, the doctor had put her on it. And we didn't know, the family didn't know. When we did know, the doctor got mad at us and mad at us. And we were like, get her off that now. Anyway, um, my mother, like, trusted her doctors. And why are people, when they're, when they're given the information, pr proof, data, studies that something is extremely harmful, even hearing those ads, and at the end, it's like, can cause death. Even if I really wanted that drug, once I heard that, I'd be like, I'm not going near that, right? Well, why do people go to it? What is that? They see the certificates on the wall, and they trust what the person is telling them is in their best interest, that they'll be okay. Why do you think people, it seems to me that people are questioning things less? Because they're brainwashed. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my wife, she's on Zoloft, you know, <gasps> and, Oh, I can't yep. believe I just mentioned that. Yeah. I'm so sorry. And, well, the, the thing is she's weaned herself down to the limited amounts, but when she's off of it, it's like her brain won't stop buzzing. Oh, well, the doctor warned us that we couldn't take my mother off of it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so is there a way for her to add along with it psilocybin or... Is she doing CBD? something we need to look into because it, wor it worries me constantly, but I've seen what she's like without it and it's not good. Mm -hmm. She has the serotonin issues, you know, that if she's plagued her all of her life, you know, basically, and then they get her on this pharmaceutical drug and now her brain can't function without it. Right. So I think the way when that does happen, I get a sense that the way to deal with that is when you are, it's never just to sort of like taking, because our bodies get, our cells get, they're working hard at the thing we're putting in our body. And so they're used to it, right? And there's signatures to everything. So you can't just yank it away, of course. But what you could do is if she's lessening it, don't just lessen it, add something in, the, my suggestion, yes. right? Yeah. Add add a, a cannabis or I keep getting mushrooms. That just keeps coming in right now. There are, there are so many books now written and they're masters on the different various uh, forms of mushrooms and what they can do and help. I think it's mushrooms for her, but do both so that you're yeah. kind of like doing this. And eventually, I eventually it's going to tip the other way. That's my sense. The yeah. medications I, it, that gave my dad are what ended up killing him over time. And it was like a Band-Aid on top of a Band-Aid on top of a Band-Aid. Yep. Found I think that's the what they're trying to create. They're I found out they have what they, what they first diagnosed them with <gasps> to start it all out. That uh, is, oh yeah. See, now that's a crime against humanity. That's a crime. I mean, if I could go back and sue 
you know, Zoloft to the doctors um, in the hospital for, you know, what they did with my mother was Zoloft because she turned into a zombie and that wasn't her at all. Um, I thought it was Zoloft was pulled. At some point, it, it was pulled off the market. I remember. I don't think she's on. That. Well, she's on a version that it's not Zoloft anymore. It's oh, something okay, else. So but they, it, they changed you, it. They changed it. It's not. Or that. they changed the name to get we around it. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think what she's, if I remember right, maybe I'm wrong. My wife will watch this later. She's probably passed on out. Like, no, you're wrong. That's not what I'm on. But I swear <laughs> that's it was a version of that. I mean, because yeah, we talked be. about it before. The dangers of worry about her constantly. You keep taking it, but we've tried. You know, she t she was off of it while she was pregnant. And it was horrible. Like she felt like there was this buzzing in her brain, and it was it was awful to watch her go through it. Um, and then at a point she got better, but as soon as the baby was born, it was like it came back, and she ended up having to go back. I mean, you know, just mood swings, things that would just you know not her. She wasn't herself. Um, so I mean, I, I do people. I know people that are on antidepressants. It does help them. You know, there's certain things that might help, but the problem is is we've turned so quickly to. Let's find a pill to fix this. Let's find a way to fix this. And we don't know right. the end result. We don't know how long, you know, if the body wasn't naturally set up to take this, well, what's the long-term use of it? You well, know, what's going to do? Look how so many people just adapted to this vaccine. Yeah, well, now you're really going to get this a show full. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going, gonna... I am not going there. <laughs> Me either. <Yeah. laughs> but no, I mean, it's, it hasn't been tested, it, you know, but That's right. people are just jumping on board to it. That's right. I think but people, that... you know, you call it whatever, brainwashing, conditioning, fear. whatever, and fear, and there's a convenience factor. I'll just take a pill, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's I mean, American way. Yeah. I swear, we, don't you know, know. we want the quick fix. There are people having effects. There are people that are dying. There are people, and you won't hear any of that on news nope. because of who's paying for the, the news bill. to be on. Exactly, yep, exactly. who's paying the bill. Um, so energy medicine is what I'm getting a sense for your wife, Jason. All right. Just, we'll look, look, in, into just look into energy medicine and actually Dia will connect you, I feel, okay. with the right person. I have a sense okay. about that. Just give me a good guess. Well, we already ran out of time. We didn't get. To, we got to get to this. Uh, Spirit Therapy uh, by Mary dot com is your website. If somebody wants a reading from you, uh, what do they need to do? Just go to the website. There's a contact me page there on the website. Uh, very easy on the menu. Um, Spirit Therapy by Mary dot com. Or my email is um, a divine realm at gmail dot com. So a d i v i n e r e a l m at gmail.com you can just write well, mary, to me well mary like i said i definitely want to I, I definitely want to connect with you and do a uh kashik reading i would love to have it um but it's been a pleasure to have you on Ron. the show i'd love to have you back on again i know you got Thank more you. books down the line coming so definitely want to have you come back on it was just look how much how fast time went by and how many more subjects we didn't even get to this was a know. lot of fun you guys i really love so, what you're doing this is cool well, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's it for the show. We'll be back next Sunday. Same bat time, same bat channel, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Central, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern, uh, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Pacific time. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Subscribe, follow. Thank you to all the Patreons out there. $2 a month do, do, does help pay the bills. If you want to go check us out, uh, look up Jason Bland Paranormal Soup on Patreon. You'll find us there. $2 a month help pays the bills. And thank you to all my Patreons. Big thanks to everybody who shares the show out. Keep telling your friends about Paranormal Soup, an open place where the paranormal happens live, where we can all talk about our experiences. We're all pieces of the puzzle trying to put it together. No judgments here. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. See you next Sunday. Hey!